Cass. Man, I gained 10 pounds eating the red and the green M&M, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I so quick with those M&M. I'll chop it up today. How you brothers been for the week, man? Oh, we've been good. We've been good. Good. We can't, we can't ignore the ratings. I mean, this light skin thing is working for me. And I heard it. It's going. It's going. It's going. Where do we start? Yo, 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 yo. What's up? What's up? What's up? Welcome back to Let's Chop It Up. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Like, subscribe, ring that bell. So you know when we're coming on, make any comments. We always get back to you and listen, people. We only two drivers away from getting to 500. Please tell a friend to tell a friend. It doesn't cost you any kind of money just to get on it and subscribe. And so, brothers, man, it's been seven days. How you been? What's, what's going on, my man? Derek, talk to me, player. Hey, man. You know, uh, just just hanging in there, man. You know, had an up and down week. Um, but you know, just you know. What don't kill you make you stronger, brothers. <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, but um, I um, I did have an interesting conversation. I, 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 you know, with my son today, my middle son especially, he had his first racist moment today. All right. Oh, shit. Yeah, he got called <laughs> the N word. All what? right. By a non-black yes, person. By a non-black person with wow. the ER on the end. Oh, you nigger. Know what I mean? Yeah, the need er, <laughs> er. So um, it was pretty interesting to hear him say it and kind of laugh it off, and you know, and um, he wasn't bothered by it, or especially he was more. He said, "You know, Dad, I wasn't really upset. I wasn't really." He, he said, "I wasn't sad. It didn't make me sad or angry or anything. He was just surprised by it. You know what I mean? Um, apparently, this person had made a whole bunch of different um, off-color remarks and off-color jokes. You know what I mean about uh, people's race and sexuality and everything and he got called. This other uh, boy got called to the, um, you know, people called called him on it, and he just kind of doubled down and went all in it and just said, "Hey, you shut up, you, you know, to my son." And um, he was like, oh, "Okay." So you know, it was kind of interesting because um, you know, I I remember being called nigger every day in the first grade. <laughs> you know, that was, that, I, I came home telling my mother I was white. I thought, you know, I guess because I thought I got to choose or something. You know what I mean? So, um, but, um, so, you know, but, you know, my experience about it was, you know, you, you punch someone in the face and they learn to stop saying it, <laughs> you yeah. know, but um, enough time. But, um, but, you know, he didn't have that reaction, though. So it's, it's, it's kind of interesting. It's kind of freeing to, to know that maybe, you know, this next generation doesn't hold the same weight you know what I mean? It, you know um, that it does for for me. You know what I mean? I guess it's if if, if something can't bother you, then it, you know, it, it, then it doesn't. You know, it just doesn't do anything to you. So so that so I thought that was I thought that was interesting. Let me let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. So how how was this reported to the school? Uh, you just kept it like yeah. Hey, and another, you know, the other child got a stern talking to. And that's you know it. I mean? yeah. <laughs> yeah, which is about par for the course, as you, as you would think. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So, um, you know, I, I said, well, you know, listen, son, it won't be the last time. You know what I mean? There'll be plenty of other times. Wait till you become an adult. You know what I mean? That's when things get real interesting. Mm. You know, but um, but but as it is right now, it seems to have a, a good, healthy opinion about it, a good, healthy yeah. uh, outlook about it. Um, it didn't hurt him too much, which is good. And I told him as much. You know, but you know, he's he's gonna learn that. You know. People, it's going to happen again, and it's all about how you react to certain things. You know, no, no, you, you don't let people tell you who you are, basically. You know what I mean? So he, he knows. So um, so yeah, so that's my my thing for them today. But other than that, man, just had a good time. Um, was celebrating the birthday of my goddaughter here at the house as well. She's just she's turning twenty today. Um, so it's just a wonderful. So happy birthday to you, Kai. I love you so much, honey. And um and and we're and we're just enjoying family time as well. So you know, so that's 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 what's happening today. So it's a good day. What's up, brother Ronnie? Man, how was your day, man? How was your week, man? Rather, sorry. Well, my week wasn't as interesting as Derek's, but um, <laughs> <clears throat> the thing is, I know I said before that um, me and my wife started uh watching binge watching The Wire. So I'm gonna make an announcement while my wife is now a Wire's fan. That's what's up. So she um she's hooked on it now. And um, we've been watching that all week. 
And the other thing, we uh, I gotta I gotta I gotta bring this up. Uh, me and my wife went out to dinner to a black owned establishment, and we had a very unpleasant um, stay at the uh, restaurant. Um, I'm just going to give my advice to anybody that has a, a black owned business. When your business is pretty much new and we're talking about it's not even two, three years old and you're an owner, you, you have to be there. You, you can't you can't imagine, you can't think that the place is running itself. You know what I mean? There was a lot of complaints that night and basically a manager, a new manager who basically told me that this was uh, his actual second day at work. And um, there was no owner to be found. So I found that a little disturbing. So pretty much you're probably home somewhere or wherever, because I know there's more than one owner uh, watching the place just burn down, you know. But uh, I just wanted to bring that up because I, it, it kind of bothered me to see that because that establishment was one of my favorite restaurants. And then it seems like I might not be going back there again, mm -hmm. you know. But um, I just wanted to bring that up. You can't you can't leave the business too early. You gotta you gotta ride with it for a little while, maybe till you can get a solid manager to run it for you. But um, it it wasn't a good look that night. Couldn't get a drink, oh, you know. Man. Yeah, I mean, in your money in a restaurant, your money is in the drinks, you know. And I really want black establishments to do well. You know what I mean? Yeah, me too. You always too. want to support them as much as possible, man. It's correct, so correct, correct, that, correct. That, that, yeah. so correct. It's so correct. important. Services, services, everything in a restaurant. I it mean, is. you know, if the service is good, that's one of the first things you tell somebody when you talk about the restaurant right. is that the service was great, you know, and then probably the second thing is the food or maybe the food, then the service. I don't know, depending <laughs> on the person. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, I just wanted to bring that up. But other than that, my week was pretty good. I'm starting to notice it's getting a little chilly. The fall weather's kicking in. And, um, you know, I like the fall, but um, yeah. that's about it. That's about it for me. Yeah, but you no, know, it's so crazy with all the technology now. When you say that, right, the owner's not there. And I remember when you was um, uh, uh, remodeling on this house, you had the what's the thing called? Rod, the camera thing. I had the ring cameras. Yeah. You, you would think with all the technology now, yeah, you would go at least see, look at your business. If you can say you got to be home, you got to babysit kids. My wife might be a, well, there's a few owners. That I know this about you talking about, and they yeah. had to be at home at night, and he had to do whatever it is. When you think you just open up your laptop and just see what's going on and see how things are looking, and then, then you could call like, yo, manager. Yeah, what's going this, on? What's there? going on? This, I see, I'm looking at table 32. These people are still sitting here, and I'm looking at they react. What's going on? Talk to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 now, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it should be. No, you're making, you're making sense, D. But, and also, too, I think me and you discussed this. I said it was more than one owner. I think that, what do you said, three owners? It's four I, owners. I think it's four. I believe it's four. How could not, out of four owners, not one of them be there? On at the restaurant and in, in a place that's collapsed. I know I was with his cousin yesterday, one of the owners yesterday. I should have, I forgot to bring it up. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I do it, I, I do it too. <laughs> we were on vacation. That's how I found out the tree fell on my wife's car because I checked the cameras, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, you got a point there, D. I mean, yeah. it's a lot of ways to do it with all this technology. You technology know? doesn't make sense, man. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Brother Kelvin, man, how was your week, man, with the jersey on? Oh. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, not at liberty to talk about my professional football team. At <laughs> I want to say this. The week not was pretty time. good, pretty good, trying to make that transition from summer to fall, you know, it's upon us and everything. But I want to pay a tribute to you guys tonight. I'm going to tell you, I don't want any division with the less chopped up crew. I'll tell you like this. When I'm in the streets in New York and people come to me and they're like, oh, Kelvin, I watch the show because of you. But Kelvin, you the star and all that stuff. I tell them, look, I said, this is a group. I know I am to less chop it up what Michael was to the Jets. What Beyonce is to Destiny's Child. Because <laughs> Timberlake was to his thing. That means we're a group. You know what I'm saying? Sure, sure, That's yeah. what it is. I want you fellas to know that. You know what I'm saying? It's all together. You know, we wow. <laughs> you know, I'm excited. I'm really excited about um what we're doing, man. We're coming up on a on a big number with the show. Everything is great, and I look forward every week uh to to chopping it up with the crew. So that's how my week has been. I can take everything that I go through and come and share it with our audience and share. It. You you know where I'm at. I'm talking about the natives, I'm talking about fireworks, I'm talking about people feeling <laughs> license plates and red bull machines. <laughs> In other words, Dr. King's vision is working. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it ain't working over here. These motherfuckers no. still playing goddamn music late. 
Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> everything is good, man. Sunday. <laughs> D, more importantly, man, how is your week? How's everything with you? Man, my week is all right, man. Trying to get my leg bending, uh, I guess with a 90-degree angle, or whatever it is now. So it's, it's not that bad. But I'll tell you one thing I noticed what being uh, when you got a disability for a little while, this cane is the savior. People open up the doors for me. Mm-hmm. They let me walk across the street. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's like, oh, go ahead, have a seat. I mm-hmm. love this shit. I'm taking this shit on the airplane with me. Every time. <laughs> Word they're they're going to bring your wheelchair. That's what they're going to do. Because especially yeah. that Charlotte airport, it seems like your terminals are so far apart. And mm-hmm. the, new, and the Delta air ter- terminal JFK is like forever walk. So mm-hmm. I, I think I'm, I, I'm loving this handicap. I just got to get that damn sticker like Long Island people. Oh, Somebody got to look up this there, boy. We got those out here. They, <laughs> they, they might have run. They might have run out of them. That so many people got. Right, man. Yeah. Just, everybody got one out here. <laughs> I don't yeah, Yo, I, my, my seven year old got one. <laughs> yeah, and ain't nothing wrong with them. <laughs> with the trainer wheels. <laughs> <laughs> she got one for her bike. <laughs> yeah. Yo, that's crazy, man. But I, I can't. Yeah. I, mean, I, I got to get one. This, this shit is working out for me, man. I ain't gonna lie, man. I'm getting really nice treatment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except when they call me an old man. Sit down, old man. Like, shit. <laughs> That's the only thing. But otherwise, I'm, it's a good man. It's a good week, man. The fall, I'm like, eh, I hate fall. I'm not saying hate fall. It's okay because it's a good sleeping weather for especially big motherfuckers like me. You sleep like a baby. But I, I don't like the summertime. <laughs> there you go, Sean. Don't get you know, Shana, Shabab. I need that. And, and I know, I know the other thing. Yeah, the the other thing we talked about with the darkening your windows hookup. So I need that too. But um, anyhow, man. So let's see what's up, man. Kelvin, man. Well, anything that was bothering you, man? Anything was been on your mind? You know, you okay, always got right, this is, going on. This is kind of universal, and I'm gonna say this. And, 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 and this this conversation needs to be had. And, and I've got to say this to to the DMV. We got to make a change. This idea of giving people licenses because they can parallel park a car is too much now. Really, we're suffering from it. People cannot drive. Now, we already know people with minivans can't drive. And I'm not going to say who else can't drive. I love minivans, man. No, I'm telling you, it, it's really, really bad now. I'm driving on a, on a bridge the other day, and this dude just decided to stop and decide where he want to go. I'm talking about he literally just stopped. There's no reason. In other words, he was thinking he's going to hit a ghost in front of him. There's nothing there. And I'm saying we people cannot drive. You know how back in the day you used to get frustrated with one bad maneuver or not? Right now, it's 90% of the people out there that just cannot drive. And, and we need to come up with some type of system where every year you got to get tested. Something mm. has to happen. <laughs> There's too many cars on the road. And I'm talking about as soon as people come and land in America, they at the DMV. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm saying it, it may be different rules to different countries and things like that, but this is the worst driving I have seen since automotive yeah travel started it is it is really really bad and they really need because realistically you tell somebody to take a written test have them make three left turns in parallel park and you send them out there amongst everybody and they trying to kill us it's really really <laughs> bad how many times when you drive do you literally find yourself just going off and it used to be like once you know per week it's every five lights you had now where people can't drive, people can't even play it off. Am I am I bugging or was it like that? No, no you, you got a point. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I agree. Agree. Well, to every, every two, two years. years. Damn. Like, Damn. And you, know, oh. you can age out. Just be honest. Like, you can age out. Losing is the new winning. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, there you right. go. Ask a Trump supporter. They'll tell you all about it, right? <laughs> <laughs> the Jets, Jets are trying to be first place for the first round pick every year. That's all. They trying yeah, to be yeah, yeah. The, 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 yeah. The, the Jets are the Shikari Richardson of football right Yo, now. Yo, why y'all? Look, look. I'm not gonna, I'm not, even though what y'all saying is true, I'm not going to have this, the Jets shape. You know what I'm saying? We show up every week and lose with dignity. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yo, let me t- I'll tell you one place I don't drive my car. <laughs> one area in New York, I don't like driving in Flushing. They, they, and, and don't you say why. Don't I'm, you not say why. why. I'm not saying why. Yo, I'm not gonna ban the band. Yo, yo, Sammy, run the scroll for what he was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I'm not gonna say I agree with you too. I'm just kidding. It's one part of the Queens. Yo, I agree. The, I agree. in flushing, there's no need to take a car. There's nowhere to park. <laughs> there's nowhere to park. Where are you going know. with your car to flushing? Where are you going to park yo, the car? In some of these yeah. countries, people they they car used to be an animal, and so they this is a little different when they get the horsepower is a little different. Here no, I'm, come. I'm, no, I'm not. No, I'm just it's saying it's coming. It's coming. Uh, I'm just saying they ain't used to the roads. 
and they know that the yo smooth I can't front. He tells the truth though. I can't. <laughs> it's I can't different. Can't front. You know, let me tell you, everybody out there, save your comments. We're not trying to hear it. No, no. Nah, nah. And there's like certain Caribbean hours. You know, we've been there. You be nervous as hell sitting in the car. All right, B. We getting there now. Let's go. Um, right, let's go. Let's go. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Driving. They, they drive with two feet too. Okay, get yeah. the stroll ready. Get this get, get the stroll ready. I didn't say I just said they drive he with said two they. Feet. He didn't say nothing. Yeah, that's but it. We, un, we all understand. Yeah. <laughs> and they come from countries where the car the steering was on the other side. That might throw them off a little bit. Mm. It's like y'all want the stroll. They like the stroll. No, nah, no. Nah, <laughs> but the engineer calls very well. Mm. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. After this. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man. Oh man. Yeah, so let me, we, all right. Let me see. All right. First, I'm going to chop and block tonight. Man, this one got to come from my sister Amanda Seals. Man, shout out to her sister Amanda Seals for this one. She put a few things in perspective for this. But, uh, so, th what she said was, the Democrats need to do more to maintain support. So, Jamie, can you play this video for my sister Amanda Seals, please? The Democratic Party is just, it's spineless. It's like they don't really have any flavor. You have something that is so mediocre and bland. It's like unsalted soup. You ever had unsalted soup? It's horrible. They expect people to get behind them simply because they're not Republicans. Just not being Republicans is not enough. You should have something that is antithetical to the powerfulness of their hate. And you don't. Hey, some people say like, oh, Amanda, you're a Democrat. No, I'm not. It's like khakis at the Gap, you know? It's just like, yeah, they're solidly made, but... They don't really have any purpose other than just going to work with a sens sensible shoe. We need something way more than a sensible shoe at this point in this country. We need a fucking stiletto with a knee-high boot that can knock these motherfuckers out. And I'm not running for office, so who the fuck is it going to be? Thoughts, gentlemen? Uh, I think she's right. Yeah. I think she's 100% right. I think I think that I always said this. I've we've had conversations with you guys. I said... The Democratic Party is definitely the weaker of the two parties, you know, and I tell you right now with this administration, you are seeing a lot of things that kind of resemble some of the issues that we had with Trump causing division. We got um, problems with people mistreated at the border. You know, I mean, it's, they're, they're starting to uh, look promises, a little like the promises not kept promises but, not but, kept. But, but, yeah. 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 Is politics. I think yeah. the difference is what she's talking about is whatever, just go hard. Yeah, yeah. He, you even respect somebody if they wrong, but they stand on it. In other words, we just it, it just always seems to be very bland, like she said. And so one thing you could say with that last administration, they just went unapologetic about everything. Correct. They, they just did, did what they and wanted they, to do. You know what I'm saying? You look at Lizzie Graham and them be like, that's right. You know, we changed the rules midstream, point of premium. Uh, Supreme Court justice will change the opposition. That's Correct. just what it is. Correct. So you have to go for yours. That's and that's true. They are weak. They are they are weak. And, and I gotta admit, 95% of us like support them with yeah. no requirements. And that's, that's I, true. I kind of feel after this administration, I think that I think a lot of minorities, they're gonna lose a lot of minorities this time. I think that this is gonna be the blow that that takes that's gonna take a lot of minority voters out Thank for you. them. I really do. I believe it. I didn't believe that in the beginning, but now with what I'm seeing going on, I believe it now. Because it's very simple to me. What happened was when Trump came into office, you were supposed to have a young budding star that you were preparing. Mm -hmm. They got to the end of his administration and still didn't have nobody to run. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying. In other words, you need that person that you're grooming to come. And we need, it's, it's the same thing with, with the mayor of New York. I, I think you just need somebody to jump in the race that can be creative, innovative, or something like that. Amanda still says she's not running for office. She should. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, run for something. In other words, sometimes you got to become what you're asking for. They drink it from the same well, man. They all drink it from the same well, man. You know, right. so yeah. So I mean, there's no difference. Like there's, you know, like I said, two sides of the same coin. There's no difference at this point, man. So to me, anyway. So there needs to ideally there should be a third party that should come to prominence, but we've been talking about that for a long, long time. So but we're burying the lead. The, yeah, the, the, we're burying the lead. The lead is this works for people. When it comes to politics, the status quo is very profitable. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is. Yeah. Both sides mm -hmm. get paid. Both yeah. parts of the government get paid. They they both yeah. have life lifetime pensions and 
Correct. All these things that are from the same they're, sources. They're both, know, selling, they're, they're both selling bullshit. There you go. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And so yeah. if, you, if you do that long enough or whatever like that, you know, it, it becomes acceptable. And that's yeah. what's, mm -hmm. what's going on. So in the and moment like, you do try to come and upset the apple cart, then it's yeah, like Yeah, like Shauna said, the majority, why are they uh, trying to negotiate? Like when, when they're a majority. And I think the right, what I've been saying before, and I know Jamie gets mad at me when I was saying this, like they're going to lose our people big time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, big time on this, and it's and it's and they're showing it. He was already like this, like right, like thing when you say with the other, like kind of feeling yeah. like it's about Biden from the beginning. Yeah, the only person I think yeah. that could save it after four years that people might get behind who's moving silent and but kind of deadly is Stacey Abrams. I keep trying to tell, I keep saying mm. if they don't go with somebody like that, it's over. It's lights out. Nah, they're gonna do they're not, they're gonna, they're gonna get behind them. No, but no, that concerns I, me when you say they're gonna lose our people. Yeah, our people don't need to just be lost and sit on the sideline. To I know that focus and put it somewhere. I know, I know, yeah. I get you, I get you on that. You know, I'm not you. saying you're doing that. I'm just saying at the end of the day, oh, forget it. I ain't gonna vote, which is our go to always. So yeah. what yeah. I'm saying is but that's what they're gonna create now, Kelvin. Yeah. And like I said, I, I I have to I have to backtrack and say that in the beginning I didn't feel this way, but I'm feeling this way now. You know what I mean? And you're gonna create a lot of minorities that's not gonna vote because they're gonna the point's going to get proven, like, oh, ain't nothing getting done for us. We're not doing that. You run your own yeah. person. They're betting that our people don't have the attention span, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, we like, you know, whatever's happening this week, you know, that's it. You know, we we we, we forget, man. We get our cold way too fast. Right, right, but what I'm saying is, you just got you just started the show by saying your son, another generation, got called the N word. We yeah, can't yeah. afford to lose our attention span because somebody always going to wake us up with that word and everything else. So that's why we've got to get somebody that can come in. And I mean, you know, that's why we always talk about the issue of leadership. We need it, but we just don't have it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, somebody brought up a good point that um, Trump even endorsed uh, Stacey Abrams in um, one of his rallies because he's uh, mad at Brian Kemp. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, I you know, he. Columbia. Adriana from Columbia. Hey. What hey. Up? hey. hey. That's my friend. <laughs> Oh, that's your oh, bro. Okay, cool. well, so yeah. we, we make sure we know no bot, but I do remember that name. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so I mean, and, I, happy I, birthday to you soon. Tomorrow's your birthday. Tomorrow's your birthday. So happy birthday. Nice. nice. And then uh, abroad, your birthday coming up in October. In October, I know that much. Yeah, it is. Yep. 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 Nice. Yep. yep. Right, brother. Got some birthdays coming up, man. All right. That was our sister Amanda Sills. All right. Now the number one thing trending this week: Robert Kelly, R. Kelly. Convicted of racketeering, sex trafficking by a federal jury in New York City. I think so. I think he, I think he got in the, in the Eastern Every District. Problem, you know. D, I'm not. I don't mean to. D, I don't mean to clap off you, but <laughs> that's all right. That's all I'll right. be honest with you. Sometimes justice is served. Yeah, in my opinion. You know what I'm and it took thirty yeah. years. I'm. I'm just saying. Yeah. It took thirty three decades of this guy running around here. It's another thing when we're going to talk about later on about black girls not being heard and and and. and and valued like white women. This guy got away with thirty years of doing this to young black women and, and, and girls. And you know what? You know what disturbs me the most? There are so many people that believe that R. Kelly is innocent. Oh, and a lot of women. Is, yeah, a lot of women too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the thing is, too, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to insinuate say that there are not innocent people in jail. There are absolutely innocent people in jail. He's just not one of them. Oh, we but, saw this shit. Yeah. About, Thirty Correct. years ago, when we saw the videotape. Correct. The thing is, um, in cases, to find this many victims and even have your own brothers make statements in a in a documentary and all that, that's not somebody that basically gathered some sort of plan against um, Art Kelly. That that's ridiculous to be able to get all these people together to say all the stuff against Art Kelly. That's just basically impossible. Art Kelly is was and always will be a predator period you know i i don't want to see r kelly ever out on the street and i don't care what anybody thinks i think, I think I, he I, will I, and he's going from predator to prey very soon and it's yeah yeah like it's, it's, think, why do he don't go to he don't get sentenced to may it, it, I, I thought it was january may 4th may, may, may 4th okay may 4th, my mother's birthday That's I, I think one of the things is they're trying to work out shout um, out to mom <laughs> I, 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 absolutely no yeah. they, they're trying to work out he's facing charges in other places so now they're, they're thinking about how they're going to three um, 
Right. They're gonna they're, they're thinking that those those places and, oh yeah, and boys, you're right, Shabab. And That's boys. Right. I forgot That's they have right. boys, you're right. I'm sorry about that. Well, somebody told me something years ago. They said lust has no limitation. It just no. grows. When Literally. you're a predator, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. That's it doesn't right. matter. Right. And the thing is, too, like people don't understand that. That's a sickness. That's not something that can be rehabilitated and while you're in prison and you change your mind. They did a study on this. Mm -hmm. And basically, most of like child predators admitted that when they got out of jail, they were going to do it again. It's a power it, thing with them for them. Too. Correct. It's a control thing. It's a domineering thing. It is a sickness. It's not. It's no medicine for it unless you amputate something. You know, but the bottom line is it's it's not rehabilitatable. You get out, they're gonna still do it again. Let me bring. Let me think. Also, since it's a racketeering charge, that mm -hmm. means he was the top person. So there's right. other people that layered this crime. So that's a mob yeah, charge. There's a mob charge, right? So yeah. now, when you look at that, other dominoes should start falling. Yes. Record labels knew about this. Jive Records, Sony Records, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna break this in some now. I was watching reading watching some last night. So Jive Records, who uh, was owned by Sony. Was named in a lawsuit by a lady named Tiffany Hawkins. She sued them for ten million dollars years ago, and they only paid out two hundred fifty thousand. So the record label knew they're saying that the record label knew that he had this thing because we all know about him. The, they knew about the Leah thing. They covered a lot because he was the gravy train. Correct. And now, I and now, so if you know these acts and you know how racketeer and you abetting in these kind of crimes, you know it could be a driver. Take, you might the girl might left the house. You drove the girl to the to the to the house. You dropped off. That's part of a crime because the rape just went down. You took help them get away with this shit. Drive records probably paid off rape people and stuff like that. If I you were aware see, that it was, if you were aware, if you were aware, if people could prove this, it's gonna be some lot of heads falling by now. Kelly, and my thing, do you think he starts snitching to knock off some time if he could start knocking out? Oh, he's stuff? definitely well, going to start snitching, bro. He's definitely going to start doing that, I believe. But you know, but that also speaks to like, um, like when you look at when you when you look at the people who were complicit. In, uh, you know, in the crime, you know, all, like you said, all the record label execs and all these other Five people. Around. That's the thing. Yeah, well, see, that's the thing. And I think that also um, is an indicator of like, you know, when people, when we were talking earlier, how so many people feel like, oh, well, he didn't do it. Maybe he didn't do it. You know, it's kind of hard to wrap your mind around it because you, on some level, you have to know that, you know, he couldn't have gotten that far without a bunch of people saying that it was okay. So just Correct. something really happened if someone said it was okay. You Correct. know what I mean? So there's some, some confusion behind that. You know but this I mean? is why I said I don't think he's. Gonna, I, I don't think they're gonna play ball with him. I don't think they need that. He's no, they don't need. They don't need anybody he's else. Big, yeah. he's, he's the fall he's guy. Got they they got no what deal. they want. Yeah, no they deal with him. him. They can I mean, go get interns to find out what happened at Jive. They don't need R. Kelly for that. They're going. They can get some of these girls to find out there. R. Kelly make no deal. R. Kelly may never see the light of day again. To Rod's point, he doesn't need to. I mean, he doesn't that's need it. to. What people have got to do, and all of us have to do it, is separate his artistry from his crime. And that's just the bottom line, no mm -hmm. matter what. Now, every wedding I've gone to, it's been step in the name of love, and it's been all these different things that people have grown to love and they've become accustomed to. you got to make your own decisions. Some people believe, believe listen, the music is out there. It's, it's talent. I'm going to still you know, I'll support it. I happen to not want to do that. I decided not to do that. Um, but some people will do that. I don't know. That Trapped in the closet? That's a little... Yeah. I don't, I don't think... <laughs> okay. Trapped huh? in the closet. He really trapped motherfuckers in the closet. Right, right. <laughs> That's right. That's what I'm like, all the, it's for the community. The, see, this is what I think happens in our community a lot. We have been taking advantage of so long and disenfranchised so long. We always feel like we need to defend everybody just in case. And, and I think we've got to be fair with, with things like this because he destroyed more lives. Then he's actually helped he's brought more pain and sorrow than he has you know brought brought euphoria and i think that's one of the biggest problems but um I, I just think at the end of the day this this nobody's gonna play ball with him i think he's going to get hit with the max that's it i think and and, and when he gets hit with it i think they're gonna send a message uh, across the industry yeah I, I i agree i agree kelvin um the thing is i don't think they're gonna play ball with him either because He's he, he's the big they don't he's the big fish but I do, and I, and when you snitch you have to snitch up 
That's true. So you got to give somebody bigger. You got to give up somebody bigger than you. And there's nobody bigger than R. Kelly in this situation. So for the rep, that's the rep, rep, record people down with him. They were yeah, 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 that's, that's, that's true. Because he's the but, he's still he's still the face that everybody's yeah, looking at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He he's the face. He's the face of the crowd. Yeah. So yeah. the thing is, too, I do agree with D as well. Where he, I believe that there will be other people in, arrested in this because the feds did this case. Mm -hmm. The feds move different than local police. That's why they hand cases over to the feds because they have a lot of more resources that they can do and go into an investigation and flip people, get people to talk, get people to tell, get people to testify. They shut down people's bank accounts. If they find anything wrong with your taxes, they get at you. They don't play fair. They don't play fair though. They, that's why they have such a high conviction rate. 95%. 95. I think it actually is higher than I think it's 97. It might be. So it's, yeah. it's damn near 100. Put it like this. Put it like this. It's high. It's high. So the thing is, I really kind of feel, but I can also see too that some of those people may have made deals too and gave information yeah. that convicted R. Kelly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you got to figure kind of things out. People that were probably resistant to it, I could see them wind up being prosecuted later. Yeah. They've got to, they've got to go for that money from somewhere, and I understand he's yeah. in the negative, so they're gonna to try to sue somebody attached to him. Yeah. He's in the negative. He got all his, but he got all. Nah, he's broke, bro. He's fucked wow. up. Money, well, some of that catalog has got to be worth something. Yeah, Who owns that? Does catalog? he own it? Does he own that catalog? I don't, I don't, think so. right? I, I don't know. John I mean, might own writer it. and producer and singer and. Well, he got some kind of. He should have his publishing unless he fucked up and sold it. You would think. Dude, I believe people I can sell it. Alone. People sell their publishing and sell their publishing. He may and, have. And that, he may have. Yeah, we all had a concert tomorrow. Oh, you ain't lying, <laughs> so Sean. You ain't lying about that shit. You ain't lying. Yeah. People be in that shit tomorrow. Yeah. Heard up. They be that is album while he was in prison. It was go platinum. You know, back there. He, he do some old Tupac shit and release some shit yep. dead or in jail. But he going to the hard. People don't realize. People like, oh, he's just going to the feds. I heard people say, you don't understand how the feds go, bro. You don't go to the camp if you got uh, if you're a uh, violent criminal, and you only go to the camp when you only have less than thirty six. Well, I know some people that had some real money. They was in the camp from the beginning. So, but and then he don't go to hard. They put R. Kelly in the hard shit because he had a violent crime. Mm -hmm. wow. so, oh, let's up people's back in. What's what it yeah. said? What's up? R. Man? Kelly made bad business deals and does not own his songs. Well, wow. that's what happens. That's what happens when you can't read. Oh shit! Right. How, do you, how, do you, how do you how do you write these songs? He just sung them out. He just rim He probably he probably picked up a crayon, scribbled in the morning. No, he, had, he, had, he had somebody transcribe it for him. Somebody. Yeah, probably he memorized it. Oh, yeah, he got a tape recorder. He got a studio tape recorder. Whatever, but I'm pretty sure that he can't read. God yeah, yeah. damn. Well, I mean, right. he, fall from fall from grace. I remember when he was on an interview. He said he liked his mother lipstick drinking behind a cup. So I was like, yeah, I remember that. That who weirdo shit is that, man? We should have fucking locked this motherfucker back then, man. Yeah. I remember weirdo that. shit. Remember that. See the money, the money in the him being a celebrity gave him power. You know what I mean? That's why he was able to do what he did he for so long. Right. You know. Yeah, he was the nineties was his, the early two thousand was yeah. all of it. Yeah. All of it. I kept it. He took it all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then remember every every graduation song was um I believe I can fly. Yeah. You know that? Yeah, kids that shit. All that stuff. I, I went to nineteen ninety four. I went to uh, his concert at Radio City where he opened for Salt and Pepper. And he was doing 12 play. They was doing Shoop and What a Man. And he was the opener. And he destroyed it. They, they didn't even need to come out after that. He opened it. But the thing I always said, and I mentioned this once before, he gets up and he, he says to the 6,000 uh, seat arena in, in Radio City, he says, how many women don't have a man? How many women are single? And everybody, of course, goes crazy. He said, well, I'll be a man tonight. But you got to be at least 18. I remember sitting there. And this is not revisionist history. This is not hindsight. I remember saying, why does that have to be said? Like, it, it, it's I remember like, that behind, like, I remember like how many of you want to go out with me? Only thing is, you got to be an adult. Like, in other words, you shouldn't have to say that. I remember <laughs> back then. You know what I'm saying? So I, that always stuck in my mind. I know. Einstein's point we remember. But it, it goes back to what, like, Shauna said and stuff like that. So, like. Represent, Representative Dan, Dan Davis says R. Kelly deserves a second chance at the guilty verdict. So, so then you know what you know what Dan Davis should do, when he, which we know is which we know is not going to happen. If R. Kelly was to get out, why don't Dan Davis let him stay at his house with his grandkids? Since he's so, since he believes in second chances, 
in, in, this, in this situation. So let then let let R. Kelly stay at your house with your grandkids. You see, that's the problem with self-serving. In other words, just because you like the man's music, you know. And let me tell you something that that was an old concept. I remember, I remember when um when Richard Pryor was asked on a Senior Hall show what he thought about Mike Tyson being convicted, and Richard Pryor, being from a different era, was like, you know, give him a chance, give him a chance, give him, a, and and not realizing this is a different era. Um, and I don't, I, I don't know that he, um, Mike Tyson did it or not. But what I'm saying was Richard Pryor was very dismissive of it because the man made so much money. He was popular. He was young and he was a heavyweight champion. You didn't mm -hmm. want to see that talent go away. None of us want to see, um, for selfish reasons, Tyson leave the ring, right? Well, a lot of R. Kelly fans feel like that. And I'll be honest with you, our community will rally around somebody, even to a fault. And that's what's, what's happening now. And as a politician... To me, that's posturing. Because if you're going to say he deserves a second chance, then you need to say every pedophile deserves a second chance. And Correct. if you're not willing to say that, and if you don't believe that, you cannot make you know preferential treatment because of him because he's talented. His talent was wasted because of his vices. And that's just the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, say, R. Kelly, come on, man. I mean, the feet, like, we go look at it. Spread feces on people. We all saw him pee on the girl. That's a that's a little different. I mean, if you peeing on grown women and shitting on them, that's your, your thing, whatever. But when you talking about little kids, man, and then like and watching little boys have sex with the girls, and I don't know if he did it with the boys too. Like that's some different shit, man. I can't see no second chance for him. Like Al Kelly couldn't watch my kids pictures. <laughs> like he couldn't do it, give them babysit the kid, like nothing, like anything like that. Al Kelly is done. What this brother yeah, say, yeah, I say I say cancel the man and not their music. Historically, a lot of artists, musical and otherwise, have had a effed up past, you know. Um right, but the problem is the content, the, past, music, the content of his music, um, it was just gonna remind you of, of correct, of the correct. It's just correct. Too, it's too explicit for me. I yeah. that I, I can't separate, yeah. it's just too much. Yeah, I don't I don't agree with that. Yeah, it's too Good. much. And I, if you I, listen I, to I the music, you in the music, he was telling on himself as well, too. Right. Yeah. So, you know, it's part of it's part of what he was doing, and he he was actually being arrogant about it. That's what he was doing. Right. You know, in these songs, this was very calculated to pull this off for this long. Yeah, it was. You know what I mean? And he's done. A, he's done a lot, and what happens is this just comes down to just evil. You can just do that much. You just can just recklessly do this much damage in people's lives, and he knew what he was doing. The, mm. Those two girls that came on, um, he sent them girls on air. To Talk about him and defend him. Correct. Right after um, that documentary came out, he knew what he was doing. Correct. And the amount of money that he spent doing this, doing this shit, you know what I mean? I mean, mm -hmm. paying off families, moving people out of state. You know what I mean? It. it, it this is just yep. more. It just yep. continues to show more yep. of his sickness. You know, Did the family took the money. Yeah, there wasn't a yeah, family yeah. took the money. Yeah. yeah, they took the money. One, uh, I think it was Sparkle the niece, right? They went to South of France. Yeah, so they were complicit. Yeah, yeah. So, so they, they were yeah. complicit. You basically, yeah. sold you sold your daughter. That's what you. Yeah. Did. yeah. No. So yeah. So so what is he supposed to? I mean, granted, the man has got an illness, but you got people feeding into it. You know what I mean? So if he's you, you sold your daughter, and what's what's the crime for that? For selling your daughter, you know? Yeah. So let's see how that works out. You know? Yeah. Another news, we got New York City Sheriff seizes vans in New York. People using their vans as Airbnb, illegal Airbnb rentals. New York motherfuckers are some creative customer grinding motherfuckers. This, what are your this, thoughts, gentlemen? <laughs> That's yo, the funny shit. Right this this is going to be the funny shit of the week. This is, on, a very, this is a very creative, very creative. business move. And I don't know if people saw the vans. <laughs> they were like those old... Um, Oh, yeah, the Uncle Van. <laughs> yeah, the Scooby Doo vans. Like, I just want to know. I just want to see a person that would go online, book a Airbnb, sleeping in a van in New York City, and basically, I mean, like, where did you go to the bathroom at? Like, I mean, no. like, it, it, it was crazy. I'm, that thing probably was riddled with bed bugs, and I mean, those vans oh, were probably from the freaking eighties. You know vans. what I understand? New York is not an event town. Like, we don't have. A great Javits Center and stuff like that. So, in other words, it's not like you trying to go to Vegas or you trying to go to Free Dick in Atlanta back in the day or something like that. You just wanted to get there or Miami. It's not, it's not conducive to that. You well, know what it, I mean? So it depends on where you're coming from, Kelvin. Where do you go to the bathroom at? 
Yeah, that's what I want. No, they they go in the bathroom. Same, same place the person that lives in their car does. People live in their car all the time. <laughs> oh, no, they but, got some custom vans, man, with toilets in them. No, 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 no. They're not using the toilet in the van. They just no. do what everybody else does. Probably they a can, bottle, peeing in a bottle. Oh. Yeah, they're doing things like that. But what I'm saying is, I don't know what the purpose was. To, if you really have to get here that bad, what did you have to get here for? Because everything else in the city is expensive anyway. They like you got here. To, if you can't afford a hotel stay, you can't afford to go see a show. You can't, hey, afford, you to can't afford to come to New York. You shouldn't even have came if you got to the van. So what do you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It ain't like Hollywood where somebody's like, oh, I'm trying to go out there for an audition. I mean, what is the deal? Well, the comp. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, with the, the, the bridges in them. Damn, Shabazz. Damn, yeah, 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 damn yeah, I ain't know that part. That's cold yeah. flooded, man. Maybe they, came <laughs> see, maybe they came to see the Jets lose. And the, <laughs> and the Giants. And the Giants. And the Giants. No, yeah, when we yeah. get there, and we are going to, I'll be about 90, but we're going to win the Super Bowl. Tell you that right now. Yo, man. I don't. I don't I think any of us is going to be here when if the for the Jets to win. I mean, you know what? Funny. I told I told a Jets fan that the other day. I said I finally come to realization. I'm not going to see it in my life. No, I finally, not. I finally, I finally, you I haven't know. seen it in your lifetime. I have not. Jets have not won a championship in my lifetime, man. I have. Wow. I I was very happy that I was able to see the Giants win their last Super Bowl because I was thinking. This may be the last time that they ever go to the Super Bowl, or it may be, you know, decades again before yeah. it happens. But um, I don't see the Jets. Or you'll have to uh, live off those other four that you had, right? I understand it's tough. I understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I feel for you, brother. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. Black and white clips of Joe Namath. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I mean, the Giants ain't far behind right now with with what they're doing right now. I just want one. Give me one Super Bowl in my lifetime, just to see what it's like. Um, With the Jets, yes. Just oh, then, then I'm sorry, one. Calvin. You're probably not going to see that. You, you got a better chance of going out of space with one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank oh, you, brother, for the word yeah. of encouragement. You got a better chance of hitting the lottery. <laughs> you about right. Yeah, you about right. Listen, man. And we were just talking about R. Kelly, man. So, uh, this Oklahoma City, Oklahoma City dad took matters in his own hands when when his pastor when he found out his pastor was being touched, his nine year old child was being touched by uh, inappropriate by a pastor. We the pedophiles, you know, they get to gotta go. I don't know the other, other way you have to handle them, but definitely. Now let definitely. me ask you a question. And I let me tell you something. I I respect any parent defending their children. And the guy got off easy to me. I don't know if you yeah. guys remember this, and I remember it like it was yesterday. And it's, I'm taking you way back, 1983, and this man um molested someone's child. The father found out the route. That they were bringing the man through to extradite him and at the airport be on the phone i saw it you remember I that? Saw that yes the man I... sat in the airport pretended to be on oh, the geez. phone when they walked him by yeah i remember that and, out, and, 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 and blew the guy's head off yeah yeah, yeah. And, and, words, and surrendered right away that's right. yeah that's right. Messing that's right in front of the feds that was transporting the man i the saw head. that you mess with people's kids that when I was a kid, my father said, Don't mess with a man's wife or his children because a man will kill you over his wife and his children. And that is the truth. And people have to learn that. And so, you know, I've worked in ministry for 30 years. And I, I've worked with young people for just as long. You do not play when it comes to people's kids. And if you have a problem with kids, if you have an attraction to kids, if you have some weird fantasy about kids, you don't need to be around kids. You don't need to work with kids. You don't. You don't need to be in the service of children. That is the bottom line. And for him to just get beat up, he got off easy. That's just yeah. the bottom line. Because I didn't have any biological children. If somebody touched my nieces or my nephew or whatever like that, I'd be sitting there right next to R. Kelly for different reasons. But we'd be in the same facility. I can tell you that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to co-sign that, Kelvin. The um, see, the thing is, right? You know, me knowing knowing how things work, for me to find out that somebody did that to one of my kids, I know how the system works. So the thing is, the first thing they're going to do is victimize my kid in a in a trial. You know what I mean? So we're gonna we're gonna avoid all of that. We're not gonna make it to a trial. We're not gonna talk to the police about it. We're not gonna even make it that far. And I'm going to end it right there because I'm not you're not going to add more trauma to my kid. You know what I'm saying? By creating this atmosphere of my child did this and this is why this happened. You know what I mean? And that's what they do in the courts when you get certain attorneys. No but we're not we're not going to make it that far. Right. 
And people yeah. need to understand that. That's the bottom yeah. line. You, and you, as a mm-hmm. parent, you have a right to defend your wife and your children. That's right. That. We're not even going to make a police report. I'm just going to take care of it. <laughs> that one stop shopping? Yeah, one stop shopping. <laughs> no, I don't need to even call no police because I don't even need them even looking at me when this happens. Right. Oh, right. Man. I, I feel that. Yeah. I feel that. Yeah. Well, it's time for our little break, man. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to have enough time to hop on over to this bathroom real quick, but um, Jamie, take us out for a little break real quick, man, to the commercial. Please, please. <laughs> I'm Dawn Kelly, daughter of Joan Kelly, granddaughter of Margaret Ackerman, and founder and CEO of The Nourish Spot. I'm a native New Yorker, born in Harlem and raised in Queens. The community connects to The Nourish Spot through a number of ways, one of which is through my family's 60 years of long-standing roots in this community. My grandfather uh, purchased the first home in our family here in Jamaica. We connect to the community through our employees. We have a number of young black and brown uh, men and women that mask up and glove up to come to work every day so that we can assemble customized fruits and vegetables into what customers want. And so I'm really happy that we have such a great team and I thank them every day for their dedication and fortitude. COVID-19 has caused a lot of small businesses like myself to close. And so we're very happy that what we've been able to do is pivot. And so instead of allowing individuals to walk into our store, we have set up um, a QR code, we set up a curbside pickup, and we have a heavier reliance on our food delivery service at Partners. So in my opinion, resilience means you know, taking challenges by the horn, if you will, and kind of wrangling them and navigating them in order to continue, uh, in our case, serving the community. The Nourish Spot is all in, all in Queens. back welcome back please follow us on facebook youtube and twitter like and subscribe ring the bells get the notifications make those comments we love them the good the bad and the ugly and please tell a friend to tell a friend we need two more shout out to the sister in columbia get some more people in columbia to check us out man we love to appreciate you um d i hate i'm gonna i'm gonna hate to cut you off All right, bro. but um because we were on this topic of um you know uh sick people that want to hurt children um I remember that I went to a, a, a training session um, when I worked for the police department and they gave some tips on how to um, recognize if somebody is a pedophile. Mm. Um, unfortunately, if somebody in your family is one or somebody that's maybe visiting your house is one, they said one of the signs is that you will see that the person spends more time with children than they do with adults. Mm. Like if there's a cookout, and you see somebody that keeps going over there constantly, constantly playing with the kids and they don't really interact with the adults. That is one of us. That is a sign. Um, and, I'm, and I'm telling this to maybe help people. And the other thing is when you have a person that is constantly giving kids things like candy, gifts and offering them money and stuff like that. We're not talking about, you know, Uncle James that comes over and give everybody a dollar. We're not talking about that kind of guy. I'm talking about when he's always giving kids that he doesn't even know, like gifts, candy, and money. 
So those are like the signs of somebody that may be, and I emphasize may, be a pedophile. And watch men that want to be around kids anyway. Like, that's yeah. like, like And women. And women. Yeah. And women. Yeah. I agree, but I'm just saying, like, yeah. what, the, the tolerance for it. Like, in other words, being around little kids and, and babies and stuff like that, a lot of guys are not trying to just do that unless they're your kid. Correct. You know, it's not, nat- it's not right. natural. There you go. It's not natural. You know, it takes a lot of patience to deal with kids. And and um because I'm always trying to get away from my kids. <laughs> you know, if I could get up and walk fast, I would have jumped out my seat right now. Uh, you know, it's just, it's kids just, drive me nuts, man. Break, man. Yeah, man, no, that's man. cool. I think they call it priming or something like that. Um, yeah, yeah, it's like priming. Yeah, for, you know. yeah, they're constantly giving them little gifts and you yeah. know, yeah, yeah. 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 Like like Mr. Mr. Wilson across the street keeps giving your kid stuff. Whatever, so the, my advice is to walk across the street and G check Mr. Wilson real hard, yeah, yeah, you know. Gotcha. So, yeah, because he's got and, and yo, do you remember? And this is a little different, but you remember? I don't know if this happened when you guys got out of high school with the, with the dudes that graduated would come back with their cars and be riding around the high school. Oh, hell yeah! Look, it used to be so lame looking to me. You in college or you graduated now, here you go cruise in the parking lot at the high school, you yeah. know. Yeah. Like, Oh yeah. <laughs> oh man. Jamie is the producer in the background said you remember the episode with Arnold Dudley when they had that little pedophile. Yeah, I remember, that. That yeah I remember that too. That was, Don't that you know what bothers me about that? that? It just it reminded me of my age because nobody else is gonna remember that. Nah, that's what I'm saying. We it's gonna be our age to remember that. Yeah, I remember that though. That was a classic yeah. episode. And I think Dudley broke out too. No, yeah. Dudley stayed. Yeah, Dudley stayed. Yeah, Dudley, Dudley stayed. stayed. And they auto bounced out crazy, man. They should got the gooch. Yeah, oh, that's what it's no, I don't, I, I don't want to wish that on nobody. What's the yeah. most okay. what, what please that, be what careful that? profiling pedophiles and men? A lot of children have been molested by women because of that speech. Y'all Kelly being one of them. Yeah, D said women too. I think my, my point may have been slightly <laughs> missed uh, just from a tolerance standpoint, you know. Usually nannies and stuff like that are usually they hire women and stuff like that. When the guy right. wants to be that, it usually is a higher suspicion. You, yeah, but you, with women, usually lots of times if um, women molest boys, lots of times it doesn't go reported. Yeah, yeah of, course, of course. It doesn't go reported. Hey, listen, yours truly, older chick got me when I was nine years old, man. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. When you I say older, you mean another kid that was just older or you mean a grown person? Uh, I love the kid that was older, but yeah, that's why you got to be much, 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 much older, much older, much older, much older. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, why yeah, you yeah, yeah. That. Now she so, thing. So I, I want to make, make sure the wife thinks we're making light of it because we're not. We're just, no, we're not making light of it. No, no, yeah. she now. But I wouldn't if I told somebody, hey, that's where I got my first piece from. They are gonna think it's a man. So I'm like, I'm, I'm ashamed actually. <laughs> I'm serious. It's oh, a heart right, attack, right. man. She looked a different kind of way now. Like, whoa. But that was. But I think she probably was uh, touched probably back in our day and shit like that. Yeah, that's some yeah, weird shit, man. Yeah, that's some weird shit. Mm. But um, yeah. But let me ask you guys the question, man. Let's, let's get a little lighter, a little not a little lighter. I guess it could be it could be a little different. So, if you had a young brother about to get married, right? And he came up to you and said, "Listen, man, my fiance wants to uh, spend fifteen thousand dollars on his wedding." But the brother saying, "Listen, I want to put fifteen thousand dollars on the house for a down payment, man." And and, and neither want to budge on this shit. Like, what what would you what kind of advice would y'all give these young people? So, man. wait. The young man wants to take the same money and put that towards a house, right? And versus the young lady who wants to spend it on the wedding, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say that's a very, I would say that's a, um, a very forward-thinking young man, you know, very responsible person, you know. Um, people, I always say, like, people want to get married, they don't want to really be married, you know what I mean? So it's like, <laughs> no, no, I'm just think about it, you know. Like, you know, everyone wants, they do want their day, but they don't think about the day after, you know? Right. So, you know, so. There's a difference between a marriage and a wedding, but let me say this, exactly. Derek, to give you a little more context. So in this particular instance, the guy has saved $16,000, okay? He bought the woman the ring she wanted for $3,000, which he took out of his savings. She now figures that she wants the $16,000 Oh, Kelvin froze. And more to have a big. Oh, there you go. You froze up a little bit, Kelvin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know what. Um... Yeah, because it's a really, really icy subject. I'm just, you know, that's how I feel about it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, the, well, I, I look at it like this, right? I agree with what Derek said. Derek said that he's a responsible young man because he wants to purchase his first home, which is your first step to building wealth, right? Mm -hmm. um, and she basically wants to spend the money that's going to cost her one, that's, that she's going to have one day for. Now, I do believe women should have their day. You know what I mean? You, you know, you want to get married. But the thing is, if you're not in that position to have a $15,000 wedding, then you can't do it. It's not recommended. Um, the other thing is, I want to know how much money she got. That's what I want to know, too. How much money she got. And then the thing is, too, I don't tell people to break up, but I know this young man might need to reconsider who he is getting ready to marry yeah, because you're not on the same page as Nora Red not, said they don't yeah. have the same values yeah. and the thing is don't ignore signs if somebody shows you who they are then you believe them there you go invest the 15k at the house and at the wedding you don't need 15k for your first house yeah well i don't know what kind of know. house you buy from under i don't under. know <laughs> well, I, I don't know. Maybe what depending on what state he's in, you know, they might, true, they, there's true, some that's states, that's there's true. houses for 150,000 in some yeah, states. Yeah, it's you know? 40. I think house for 75 down south. Like yeah, that. correct. You, you buy that? Be careful. He, he don't live here. He don't live here. <laughs> you know, he don't live here. He or she, we don't know if he or she. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you don't want the wedding bad. just for other people because what I realized is the people that love you, if it's in your backyard, it'll be enough. And if you yeah. love each other, that'll be enough, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah get dressed, get some pictures, do it somewhere that's affordable. I know people that do it on on um, 4th of July. I know people that do it on Thanksgiving night. They do it and they get up to 50% markdown and stuff. Like that. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's insane. Now, I, people starting their weddings and getting they're taking loans out for their weddings and stuff. What happened? Crazy. Ronnie cracking up. What happened? Because as soon as Kelvin, Kelvin said that they want to get married on the 4th of July, I thought about him with fireworks. <laughs> I said, Kelvin probably said, I'm not going to officiate your wedding. If you, you, if you don't have no fire, if you got fireworks there, I'm not doing it. <laughs> now, there's a lot of Monday weddings, man. Monday weddings and Wednesday, Wednesday weddings nowadays, man. Yeah. 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 But you, yeah. I just want to let people know you have weddings. You, you don't get that money back. Facts on that. You, you don't get, get that money house. back. Right. You know, so the thing is, if you pay 15000 for the wedding, you'd be lucky if you get back 5000 <laughs> Right. That's right. So, this is what Shana wrote. That's a funny shit. <laughs> Let's yeah. do it all over again. I would have fed up 200 MFs. Hey, Shana, was I there? Was <laughs> I one of the motherfuckers? <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah. No, you're starting, you off, the money you're starting off in debt, man. You know what you're I mean? Damn. Mm -hmm. you're starting on, off man. in debt. Yeah, you're starting off that bad, man. So, man. You, you, you know, put something on the wedding, you know, the day after, man. Invest yeah. your money for the day after. Something, something's going to ensure or add to the potential success of the match. No, no, we need this conversation. Um, oh, yeah, that's I know. I was say, I know it's there, Sean. I ain't one of the motherfuckers now, goddamn it. Oh, my <laughs> man, was a game with his tits out. He ain't put them on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Um, I, I don't know, man. I wish we had some women to chime in on this, man, because I know it's coming from men. Because, men, we like, we know we don't got no part in this way. We just showing up. We just the motherfucker that's standing in the pitch. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's really her day and shit like that. Like, but you know, yeah. we think about the finance and stuff. I wonder if we had some more women chime in. Now, let me ask you a question, Kel Kelvin. Have you ever officiated a wedding for people that were already married and they just having a, a wedding because they didn't get a chance to have a wedding when they couldn't afford it when they got together? Very, very good question. And so um, let me make sure I understand it. So the people that already were married people people were after the ceremony, married. right? Two, two people probably went to the JP when they was young yeah. because they didn't have any money. You know what I mean? And then when they they grew, they made some money, they, get, they got their lives together. They said, we're going to have the wedding now that we never had. Before. Okay, so this is what I've done. I, what I did was I had somebody um, that renewed their 10 year. Okay. And then they did it big. They did it a little bigger or whatever like that. But I don't do the, um, we got married a week ago and now we're just doing it to go through the motions for everybody, that type of thing. I don't like to do that. I know people do that regularly. I don't like to do it. I don't like us acting. Yeah. No, but my point is basically like if you're going to be together and you obviously didn't give this woman her day when you guys, you know, succeed, get your house, you guys advanced in your career. Now you got money in the bank right. and you can right. afford it. Right. You can still give her that day later on. Yeah. That's yeah. my I, point, yeah. too. You I, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I may have been involved in something like that. People would say that we didn't have any money. When we got married. And Correct. People, some people right. 
and things like that. So yeah, they actually wanted to, because a lot of people, especially a lot of women like to know that feeling of that day and then coming down that aisle. Correct, correct. People never had that chance to do that. You know what correct. I mean? But I find those are some of the most successful marriages, man. You know, I've met yeah, you got a little man. more life experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You did, first of all, you didn't start off in debt, and you got married. You know, when you got married, you really wanted to be married. You know, it wasn't about the day, or it wasn't about the pomp and the circumstances. They just went ahead and did the thing, you know, and lived their life. And then later on, they just had their day. You know, they just—it's it, it, something about that. It just took. It takes a, a little extra. Uh, for foresight and thought, you know what I mean? Other than just the emotional response of just, hey, I, I want to have this big party, you know? So, yeah, that's yeah. us. Yeah, our wedding was very small, simple, stress free, and very inexpensive. Best wedding ever. Yes, it was. We had a very small wedding. You know, and what I mean? no got no. tight because they didn't get invited. You know what I mean? Had to do uh, that later, but yeah. Did no rent so, make her own cake for a wedding? No, she did not. Oh. Assisted made it. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Wait, yeah. I missed that. Yeah. I missed that big comment down. Yeah, let me see the big comment. Yeah. Read that comment. Jamie, can you bring it up again, fact. please? Yeah, don't marry a woman who's obsessed with the wedding. Exactly. Marriage yeah. should be about partnership. Do it big when you can afford it. Women have been socialized to want a big wedding. Waste of money. It is. It is. Yeah. Exactly. I think that's a valid point. Yeah, it's all about the couple and partnership. Get everyone else. Only, yeah, only have people there that matter. That's, yeah. And that's, that's a good point, too. That's a good yeah. point. Because I'm going to speak from experience. Weddings are not cheap at all. And I'm going to mm -hmm. tell you now another thing. You may set a budget, and I guarantee you, you're going over oh, that absolutely. budget. Absolutely. You're going over that budget. Yeah, so absolutely. the thing is, you I got a budget I, I for 15 grand. If you had a budget for 15 grand, you're spending 20, 2022, 20, 23, 24. Easy. 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 Think about the Easy. ring. Think about the ring that you bought. Yeah. You know, you know, all the stuff that you have to do that's the surrounding it. And then the sad thing is this, this, I've seen this. A lot of couples are so busy and trying to make this the perfect day, they don't get to enjoy it. No, Correct. you don't. You, you That's know, a good point. Know. Good point, Kelvin. Perfect. You know? yeah. Good point. And, and then you tie it. You tie it after the wedding. Right. Right. Exhausted. Exhausted. Yeah, break from the wedding. Oh. Yeah, for Correct. real. Correct. You, yeah. you, the wedding is not for you. It's actually for your guests. That's yeah. what it is. I'm dying for somebody to have a wedding so I can go eat up their shit. You know? <laughs> you know what it is? You, you got a $100 plate and somebody gave you a gift uh, out back steakhouse, $25 <laughs> on a gift card. You know what it is? Yeah. I, my wedding was a fog to me. I mean, I I don't I don't remember a lot of it. Like it, like you said, you're constantly moving. They're pulling you to take pictures. You're going here. You're going there. And I mean, I didn't even get a chance to really enjoy the food. I mean, I got to dance a little, you know, some. But I the the wedding was for basic. I had to ask like D and other friends that were there, like how was the happy hour? Was it good? Was it nice? Because I, I didn't see it, but I paid for it. You know, <laughs> that's true. That's yeah. true. That's true. That's true. Like but you know, that'd be a good idea. You know what people should do? People should get married. And if you make it past two years, then go ahead and do the big seven. If you got the money. Right. But I'm saying, like, in other yeah. words, because people right now are, are, are still paying for marriages and they're on the way to divorce and they're still paying for weddings. I mean, yeah. you, yeah. Know, you know, yeah. $30,000. And, and, and this is how I feel about it. If you, and this is the way I do it, if you spend $20,000 plus on a wedding, you should already be a homeowner. Correct. I know somebody, and this is a true story, not going to say no names. I know somebody spent $50,000 on a wedding, got married, and they moved into her mother's basement. 50 that grand in, in debt. Huh? This is in New York. Oh, yeah. New York. It, I, I told you like this. A wedding in New York, a wedding's like New York when they have them like 150, 200 guests. And then and it was, it was, it was like, those shits is 50 grand. It's the muscle. It is. Off because the muscle. The my thing cousin is, got married on Thursday. I told my cousin came from down south. I said, how much you think this wedding is? I said, because it's on a, I think it was a Wednesday or Thursday, something like that. I said, this is easy minimum. I'm looking at the place, 40 grand on a weekday. And they said, what? And they, I asked the father, they said, yeah, that's how much it's going to cost. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, once you, if you, how technical you get, like I didn't have limos and all that stuff for my wedding. We just did everything in the catering hall, in the hall, even had the ceremony in the hall. So you didn't have to travel. No guests had to travel. And it still, it still was a, it still was a bread. It still was a nice piece of cheese. We gotta talk about the worst weddings. I know Kelvin, you've been officiating. So my, I had a cousin in Newark. One of the worst weddings I've been to in my life, my dude. <laughs> I've had a couple. I had somebody forget the license. Somebody um, what? I've had somebody forget the license. Oh wow! And you can do all that forty and fifty thousand dollars you want. That license don't make it back to city hall in five days. You got married. Yeah, you ain't married. Oh wow! 
You know what I mean? Then the other thing that is interesting is the destination wedding where the couple gets everything free and then all the friends and family got to pay for their accommodation. That's different as well. Where, you know. You find, you find a lot of people show up at destination weddings because I figured that would limit your guests because a lot of people wouldn't want to fly. But again, what happens is this. A lot of people come. Yeah, you're right, Rodney. You don't have two or 300 people at those destination weddings. Yeah. What I'm saying is a lot of people um, feel like you, the people that love you will, will support you Correct. any way you do it. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. That's why you don't need to do all of this. You see what I'm saying? I think what happens is people need to understand this. You cannot circumvent the experience of being in love no matter how you dress it up like in other words it's not going to compensate for any it, anywhere where there's there's a void at and i think people think that they think the bigger the better the brighter the most expensive solidifies the union and it doesn't it doesn't do that there's some people been you know married and they they had two nickels to rub together but they genuinely loved each other Mm -hmm. And it didn't matter. And, and and to this young man, the woman that's pressuring him to do this is saying she's not the one because he should Correct. be enough. And respecting Correct. his wishes should be enough. And that's what we don't do. That's Correct. it. And I think we got to stop beating down men who just don't have the money to do all these lavish things. You know what I mean? Or the man wants to be responsible enough. Correct. To say, I want a place to lay our head. Yeah. I'd rather have 365 days where we could be in this house together then one day where people ain't gonna remember if they had the steak or the fish and that's it <laughs> correct correct that's correct. very very true and you're gonna be broke after that wedding exactly yep. yeah, yeah my, i remember my father is ninth my sister got married 84 i think it was and i think he spent like 15 he took a loan spent like 15 that's 84 now so people say oh that's not me. 1984, $15,000, like oh, say 50, 50 grand. That's it. Because people got to look at the, what price right. of cars was back then. All yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. And my sister got divorced in five years. Wow. My father was still paying on that loan. Wow. Let, let, me, let me tell you something. <laughs> let me tell you something. Still I'm going to say this, and I hate to say it because somebody I know, and I, I, I really hate to say it. I know somebody got married, and I don't know if you ever had this experience before, where you're sitting there, and you know that this is not going to work, <laughs> you know that the person, the person should not be getting married. You know the person is not even all there. Yeah, and I yeah. remember feeling like an accomplice. I remember feeling guilty <laughs> because when the minister was like, "Does anybody in here see just cause why these two should not be married?" I want to raise my hand like all of us in here are guilty because we know when I tell you they got married on Valentine's Day and they went for an annulment one month later. I oh, know I got one beat better yet. It's, I got a cat that uh, Sam. I don't know if Sam. But Sam knows his brother very well. He's this dude that goes to Albany. Jam, I mean Jamie. Sorry, you know. Anyhow, so his brother got married on a Friday. They was getting split up on that Monday or Tuesday. Really? Wow. Yeah. What happened, D? She was the ugliest woman I've ever seen in my life. Well, wow. he knew that beforehand. <laughs> he, I mean, he just found that, just that on, that on wedding day. wedding day. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what happened. They were young and dumb. You know, we were like maybe they were teenagers, maybe nineteen. That was just dumb. And yeah, you should probably grow up first. You should probably be grown yeah. before you get married. I, yeah. I don't. I don't believe in people getting married young. That's just my personal opinion. That's not, not, not after, yeah, after the stuff I've been through and probably, probably you know what we've been through. Correct. I, I think people should all get way to the least close. To, if not thirty-five or better, you know, men for me, men should be forty. C correct. I'm going to tell you if you are not over the age of 35, getting ready to close, get, I don't think, uh, I just think you're too, you're not ready for it. You're yeah. not ready. You, for you, it. You're probably absolutely right. I mean, there's something you, about maturity. You should be better at picking out mates at, at that age as well, too. Yeah, right. yeah, because you know yourself better. Correct. Before that. You know correct. yourself better. And you've yeah. dated you dated other men and women or whatever, and you've been able to go through certain things and say, okay, this is not a good person. That's not. So you'll be able to be able to read people a little bit better once you get older yeah. and wiser. You gain you that realize experience. beauty don't yeah. pay bills. No, beauty don't pay bills. It doesn't pay bills at all. And sometimes beauty cracks too. Right. And the next yeah. day you don't have that dress, that dress or tuxedo on. Correct, and, then, and both of us won't be able to fit that tux or that dress we got. Married. That's right. The figure eight gonna be a figure yeah. oh. Or oh, Mr. and Mr. Mrs. and Mrs. Potato. Jamie said beauty pays on IG. 
That's back. <laughs> but but I'm, I'm mad at Jamie because Jamie knew, man. When he was at, when he was at my wedding, man, Jamie could have helped me out, man. He could have dug out and said something, man. D. Mm -hmm. I knew. I knew too. God damn it, Roddy. Let's, let's no, we talked on. about this. Remember, you told me I'm I can't out. believe you. Nah, I <laughs> you know. I'm gone. This is over. I I I I can't sit here. We we had to talk about it. I said, you said, remember you got mad at me and said, why didn't you tell me? And I said, I can't tell you something like that at that yeah, point. It was early in our relationship, no, too. It was early. So okay, yeah. I get it. I get it. I get it, man. But, yeah, but I, knew me since we were kids, man. No, I, I knew. I, I knew it wasn't gonna day, work. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think? Y'all believe in the trophy wife? You believe the trophy wife thing is real? Trophy I think, wife, you mean for I looks? I don't I don't believe in trophy wife. Nah. Mm -hmm. no. What is it? What is that? Dude? What is this, this pretty wife that you just you got? Well, 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 I prayed for you, brother. I said, yo, I hope That's it works. That's motherfucking them, wrong. too. Oh, you <laughs> keep checking in, bro. Yeah, All I'm telling you, Jay, a lot of hey, people bro. knew. A lot of people knew that it wasn't going to work. D, did I know you back then? Mm, what year I got married? Uh, I can't remember. Oh, three? Is oh, three, right? Oh, oh, I don't three. know. I, I, yeah, yeah. I, you know, had so, so, I, didn't, so, I didn't even know you back then, and I knew, D. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was born in 06. It's 03. It's 03. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God yeah, yeah. damn. Yeah. They, 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 the, um, the connection wasn't there. God damn. It was just damn. No, man. yeah. Just, damn, man. Look no, like you look at you I'll be honest with you. Look at, look at the upside. You're a better man for it, though. You're a yeah, better man I, because I, of it. I got a lot less money. But, yeah. <laughs> 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 what, what got you to the altar in the first place, brother? Pressure motherfucker saying, like, uh, you know, you get a certain age. I was only my 20 still, you know what I mean? People That's got how it was back like, then. Yeah, people okay. like, yo, you're getting old and your family talking about this, and you know, you can't be shacking up and all the other shit. You know, the religious shit came in the head and all that stuff. I'm like, okay. God damn. And I say, you know what they might write? You want to grow older by yourself? I'm like, damn. You're 20 years old, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm gonna give some, I'm gonna give some really good advice, right? Number one. Don't listen to people unless you're getting it from somebody that's experienced that's already married. That's number one. I did. Number of a bitch is one of misery love company. <laughs> the thing <laughs> is, too, when you start basing getting married on a timeline, like I got to be married before I'm 29, I got to be married before I'm 26. A lot of women now. Yeah, yeah, that's a dangerous look because the thing is, that time frame is about him or her. It's not about you guys together. It's based on that, just that one person. Oh, I got to be in this position in my company by this time. No, it, it, you're just, you're just being a piece in their timeline. You know what I'm saying? So I don't recommend when you hear people talking like that, that's not a good look for usually the other person. Right. And whenever you do something to appease other people, yeah, you know, we, we do a lot of things for that because we what are they the societal pressure. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, you know, I let me tell you something. I'm gonna be honest with you. I've always wanted to be married. Okay. Um, but the thing is this a lot of people will, I mean, they'll they'll always point you in that direction, lead you that people always try to set you up, they always try to do these different things. One thing you've got to do, you gotta know yourself well enough to say, I've got to do what works for me. Correct. If you don't do what works for you, then what you're gonna do is somebody else is gonna dictate to you what works, and that's not gonna happen for you. So that's the reality of it. So you've got to know what you want. You've got to know what you don't want. You see what yeah. I'm saying? Like, for instance, I'm not, a, 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 I didn't grow up with a brow beating mother and stuff like that. You ain't no good. You ain't good. So that getting angry and flying off the handle and, and walking out and storming out, I'm not a big fan of that. I believe, you know, you should be able to talk things out and stuff like that. Now, in perfect world, that happens, but it doesn't always happen. And you're not perfect. The person's not perfect. So you got to work together. But there's certain things that are deal breakers. Mm -hmm. Other things that are deal breaking and stuff like that. I'm not a fan of nasty attitudes, no matter who it comes from. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, God, don't another thing too, don't sacrifice your happiness to make somebody else happy. Exactly. That doesn't work either. So, like I'm not that guy that believes in happy, happy wife, happy life. That means that you're unhappy, but she's happy. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't believe in that. Right, definitely. No, I feel the great Beanie Siegel said, my wife said, change my life. He said, No, I need to change my wife. 
quote from Beanie Siegel. Yeah. I, didn't, I never thought we would be getting marriage advice from Beanie Siegel. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why Philly's co- divorce court is full. You know? <laughs> court of the Beanie, Se- Beanie Siegel. <laughs> Classic. But now this is, yeah. this is a good Don't time rush into man. marriage, y'all. Don't rush Bird. into it. We well, should you marry your friend? Is that the question? Should you marry your friend? I say Not yes. Yeah, yes. Your wife I your say friend. absolutely your woman, your woman, yes. But for, for men and women, you should be your best friend. See, D, you're 100% right. 100% right. The thing is this. I, th- I see people that, that, that men and women that try to be friends with a man and a woman. I mean, and I'm like, you guys don't even realize you're good with being friends. You'll probably even be great as a couple because you you like hanging out with each other. That means you enjoy each other's company. You talk. Why don't you start a relationship? It's best to start off as friends because, like I said, then you enjoy each other's company and time and you have things in common. So I, I agree 100 percent. You should marry your friend. Unless you know, unless he's a dude, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, there's a yeah. place for that too for people. Here you go, happy spouse, happy house. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. And that's right both there. both spouses, man and woman. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now, now Sean and her husband, like those two, are fucking funny as hell. Y'all follow them on Facebook, man. They they crack jokes on each other. I love their relationship. I was there for that. I, I man, we used to play cards and Sean out all kinds of shit. So. That's that's my sister right there. So I love yeah, I love right. That's my brother. It, I love you got to be able to enjoy each other. You know what I'm saying? Like me and my yeah. wife, we tease each other and we joke around and whatever. But like I said, we we're <laughs> friends. You know what I'm saying? We're friends. You gotta like each other, man. You, you go gotta like each other, each other for the first. Rest of your life, yeah. Right? You gotta, gotta like, like each, each other. other. Yeah. Yeah. You know? uh, go, I mean, go. there's dudes sitting in the living room right now, and as their wife walk by, they go, "I don't like her." Yeah. yeah. That's not good. That's not good. Yeah. And you got to you got to kind of know the person's background too. I think all that stuff is important. You understand culture, you understand people's family, their upbringing because you never you need to know somebody's makeup. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had a, a, a counselor one time say, "Don't marry a person unless you've seen them angry." You need to <laughs> know. Point. You know what I'm saying? You don't want her coming into my you don't you don't want to make me angry. You would like me. <laughs> well, you the thing know, is, you fight there too. You know, yeah. <laughs> you gotta let it, you, you gotta know if your wife's gonna jump in if you're getting busy too. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the other thing is, you know, you got, your girl gotta have a girlfriend. So you know, a lot of people know got multiple wives. Run this girl. Oh, okay, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we, <laughs> run this girl. Run. <laughs> Come on, I ain't saying nothing crazy now. I ain't saying nothing crazy. You, you know, the thing is too, like with me, I always. When I was dating, I always look for the bad in the woman first, because the good is is the gravy. That's 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 good. People do it sometimes do it backwards. They look for the good first, and they don't pay attention to the bad, mm-hmm. and that's when you get into bad relationships. I mm. you got married with gang rules though. No way out. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, you gotta wait. You gotta get jumped in. You gotta get yeah, jumped out. Yeah, you gotta right? get jumped in. <laughs> Them two. Nah, it's not shout you out. Like, get dude, jumped out. Nah, for dudes, real, real talk. Like I'm not like because Shauna's like chiming in on him. Like she a ride or die for real for my man Ray. Man, like they've been through some stuff. Like and I love Ray, and I'm not gonna put their business out. But Ray's a stand up dude. I mean. One of the most stand up brothers I've ever met, and he got he got the right one right there. Shout out to them words. Very I'm, good. I'm, very I'm good. For them. Like he's a ride or die. Like people can take lessons from him and, and, and him as a man. He's a man's man. I like to see that. I like to yeah. see couples that know that they are end all be all. You know what I'm saying? And they don't exactly. let anybody penetrate right. what they have. You know yep. what I'm saying? Nobody yep. infiltrates in, infiltrates this relationship. You yep. know? Yep. Yep. And if they do, you give them smoke together. <laughs> exactly, exactly, man. Yeah. We, you know, like we just talking about good brothers, man. We gotta start protecting our sisters, like we got some missing, you know, missing black girls, man, and and indigenous people, man. We don't, they don't get the same attention and love as missing white women. And we've seen this race, like they like this white and white girl, was not not shot, not no disrespect to her and her family, but she they she she was a news trending for like two weeks, and we got countless and thousands of young black women and and women of color, other women of color missing, and get no headlines. Like we talked about how R. Kelly got away with thirty years of raping these. Raping these and, and harming these young girls, and we still have no and, and and they don't get no headline. We all knew about this. Like this thing is going on. There's no thing with just white men, just black women, black women in general get on by any kind of man. And yeah. you know, your thoughts, gentlemen. Well, the first thing I think you have to do is, you know, honor your own. And we've got to be, you know, in lockstep in, in, in making sure 
that we place the same value. And I don't know as a community if we've been able to do that. We've got to do that. We've got to lift a standard with that mm-hmm. also because any community that gets something is because they fought for it or because they wanted it or, you know, and some communities obviously had an advantage from the beginning. But I think that's that's most important because from a national standpoint, everybody else that can make stuff go viral and stuff like that, when it comes to us, we need to do the same thing. We need to make sure that we get this message out there that that, that people – uh, from our community have been wronged as well, you know, especially young ladies. And now, and I and I'll say this, and I know this is gonna sound foul, and I really, I really believe that, you know, from our pop culture standpoint, there's been a lot of degrading of women, especially when we mm-hmm. grew up in the '90s. You know, it was a lot of that, and it was kind of accepted, it was promoted, and I think it just made a lot of people just think that we were more disposable, especially our women, <laughs> like that, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's just how, you know, the way we describe them, the way we talk about them and things like that. And in a lot of cases, the way we treated them. And so I think we had to kind of do our own housekeeping there. Um, and then it, when it comes to the national media, then if people don't give you the same uh, coverage, then you have to let people feel that. I'm not going to support the advertising. I'm not going to support your network if you don't give us the same coverage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, like, recently, you know, we just had this, uh, this other sister, Randis, has got... Um... Me, uh, Marcano, right out in Florida, right? She was, uh, yeah, there you go. Thank you, same Jamie. I mean, Jamie for a picture. And this sister, she was, um, she's been missing. And now the dude, the, the, the person of interest, he was wind up, he found dead himself. I don't know if it's self inflicted The woman, I'm not sure about the details on that. If any brothers want to chime in on that part of it. But like, this sister been missing, and she's still, I mean, she's still missing. And like, if you barely get a peep, somebody sent me on, on Instagram. I didn't even know what the story was. I was like, what's the story? And then, Jamie put it and told us, I was like, oh, this is the same story I read the other day. Any thoughts? Yeah. Yeah, it seems I think um the mate the maintenance man is involved because um he's the one that's uh is a man of person of interest that has been found dead. Mm-hmm. And they say that basically the maintenance man had the master keys to her apartment. Mm-hmm. And they said that the apartment was entered through the with the master keys. So but they have not found her yet, you know. But you're right. It's, she's not getting a lot of press. Um, a lot of people don't know about the story because there's a missing white woman right now. I mean, well, she's not missing. She was found. Her remains yeah. were found. They're yeah. looking for the to the feet for the fiance right now. But um, the thing is, I think the media plays a huge, huge part in it, and they see um, white women as more valuable. And the thing is, too. Um, they they constantly run the pictures because they project the image that you know she's the American girl next door, you know, with you know the blonde hair, blue eyes, and the media kind of f- feels that that's going to get more attention, more attention than a young black lady, which is horribly wrong. Um, but uh, I think everybody's got value, but uh, unfortunately, we live in a society that doesn't see it that way. But if you don't get that value in life, what makes us think you don't get it in depth? I mean, that's just the bottom line. We well, that's true, too. We don't value you know. the same. It's not yeah. equality there. It is not going to be equality in debt. I mean, that's just the bottom line. I mean, I think we've we got to recognize it. So, again, to me, you've got to make people recognize. That's just it, you yeah. know? And I just want to add is that my sympathy goes out to everybody that's missing. You know what right. I'm saying? Well, you know, I, I think the situation with the white the white young lady or, or a sister or whatever, I just want I want everybody to be found hopefully alive. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it, I do deserve that everybody deserves feels that everybody deserves equal amount attention. of attention. Yeah. And, right. I, you know, yeah. Yeah. and I'll say this too, and this is obviously younger people, probably younger than the average person in our audience, obviously. If you're with somebody who wants to keep you away from your family, mm. if you're with somebody who doesn't want to be around your family, mm. um if you're with somebody who your family doesn't like, find out why. Yeah. If people that love you don't like the person for you, then you need to find out why because there's a reason. Yeah. Mm. Usually people that want to keep you away from your family is because they want to control you. Exactly. You know what I mean? So they figure if they get you away from your loved ones, then there's nobody to influence. Or he may be revealed because maybe your father might say, hey, this dude is a jerk. He's an a-hole or what have you. And he may know that because men read men if you're a man, you know. Definitely. But, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a control thing when somebody's trying to keep you away from your family. No question. And it happens on both sides. I've seen women 
get married, move men out of state so they can be away from their families too, so they can be in a controlled situation. I've seen it in both situations. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, sure. Black women are not involved. Yeah, fuck the cows that commit these crimes. Absolutely. Yeah. Murder. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Did you hear about the white news anchor who was suspended because he wanted to talk about how women, people of color, don't get the same news coverage? Ain't that something? Ain't that yeah. some shit? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah, he slipped it. Yeah, you got a trouble. He lets the truth slip out, you know. Yeah, and, uh, the yeah, media, yeah. the media, makes the story that they feel is going to run better. That's what they're in the business of doing. Well, you it know? would have been on BET nightly evening news or a had Gordon. To be sold. <laughs> it had to be sold so we can have the shark Hornets. So what I'm saying is, you have no, you have no, you know, the the, the strong Tim seed in the East every year. What I'm saying is, at the end of the day. At the end of the day, you got to have a media outlet. You oh, know what I mean? Tim said his daughter was black. There must have been a white dude that had like a, was it adopted daughter? Somebody give us some insight. Was he black? So that's, yeah, that's deep. That's deep. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know, man. It's, it's no, like, no, he's not. He's feeling that. He's seeing it, you know, because yeah. you, can't, you can't hide from it. You know, you love who you love, and then you're seeing your own daughter just grow up being treated differently. You know, I, I wonder what that's like. You know, he had to have known before, you know, before that. You know, so it's, it's interesting that you bring yeah. that on yourself sometimes. So kudos yeah. to him, though, for saying yeah. something, though. Yeah. Well, I yeah, thought it was, it was a doctor. doctor. Yeah, okay. yeah, so, yeah. yeah, kudos yeah. to him, you know, for, for saying something, you know, for real. Yeah. And it's like you know, and, and it's it's kind of go to our thing. We said that when uh, people start taking effect and, and things are going on, you have to sing at Jill Scott. We talking about protecting our kids. Jill Scott's considering fleeing the United States for Holland, right? Yeah. Concerned about teens, her teenage son safety. I think his son's born. His son might be like in the early teens right now, something like that. I think he's nine or fourteen, something like that. Yeah, he's something still like young. He's still young. Yeah, he's still young. Pretty young. Yeah, but he's yeah, but he's. I mean, listen, you you, you can't you, you can't hide. You know, yeah. there's no way he's going to be able to go on this planet where he can hide. You know, there are places. Listen, at the end of the day, I mean, great, it's great, and, and you know what? If she can do that, I'm great. You know. But um, the rest of us, man, we gotta make it happen here. You know, we gotta make it happen here. She shouldn't have to. She shouldn't have to move. You know, <clears throat> to just just to give him an opportunity to just live and just be a normal person and just you know just just have some happiness and everything. You know, um, we I, it's, it's, something's got to be done with us. Just you know, as a people, where we just gotta stand up for that young man's right to just live and just be. You know, and I know we try and different. I don't know what what that is, but um, you know, yeah. I feel sorry for the sister that she feels that like she has to do that. You know, but um, I wish she would stick around and be part of the fight, though. But you know, with us, but, you know, yeah, there's a lot of people in the mindset, though. A lot of people want to get out, especially with the black kids. What we saw in the, especially with, with 2020 yeah. with George Floyd and you know, countless yeah, sure. brothers and sisters getting uh, getting killed and, and murdered, man. And yeah, I just wonder why Holland out of all the places. I've been there, but I wonder why. She, she said because she, she likes the liberty there. She said mm -hmm. everybody rides bikes there. Which one I that's think of ride a bike, I think of Jill Scott. And then the other thing was <laughs> um, um now, hold up, who's gonna get the strolls and you had tonight? Um, not me. No, <laughs> you know, I, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you, he shouldn't have got it for that. No, man, this has been far worse. I, we <laughs> have to ask. This is saying, like, come on. Saying, in this scenario, we got to ask, who's wrong, me or you guys? I could, I could be playing it straight. I don't know. No, I'm gonna know be, I don't think I don't think Kelvin should have got it for that. I really but, don't. <laughs> but, no, and so she said that. She also said that, you know, uh, if people want to go and if pay for sex, they could, they could do it. She said not that she would do it. She said, but at least you know that you could. She said that. Um, and, and she 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 didn't clean it up the way I did, by the way. And so she was saying that. And so what it is, I think some of these artists, they go tour and they find places. My understanding is there was a time when men in the army went to Germany and they fell in love with it and never came back. Yeah. You know what I mean? And things like that. And um, so I remember talking to a woman uh, recently and she's Russian. And she's like, oh, I need to bring you over to Russia and, and you need to hang out with me there. I said, no, nah, I'm not going to Russia. She said, no, no, no. It's not an issue with black people in Russia. Never heard that. Yeah. Never thought of that. You know what I mean? So there's different there's different things, but I'll say this, Jill Scott yeah. and people like this, this is what I feel. I think it's an interesting, interesting conversation. But my grandfather, my father, and my uncle went to war for this country. Nothing is gonna make me leave it by default or something like that. You know what I mean? In other words, I have a right to be here. I was born here. 
and, and I'm not going to leave just because someone else may not want me to be here. That's the thing. And I understand you you do what works best for you. And I don't knock people that leave. Some people go to the Caribbean or wherever they want to go. I'm just saying I don't want anybody to feel like they're forced to leave, especially when you pay sweat equity in this country. And, um, you know, we've shed blood. There's not one war that we haven't fought in in this country. And so as a result, um, I don't want anybody to force anybody out, you know. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't have a problem with anybody going anywhere. If then, you know, if you want to move to Holland, you want to move to Europe, whatever you want to go, you know, I don't have no problem, you know. But I, I will, and I, I get it. I get a mother, you know, wanting to protect her child, and she's feeling uncomfortable in this country from what you know she sees going on. But um, Jill, Jill Scott probably lives somewhere here where her child is not as in danger as a lot of other kids. I'm quite sure. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Pretty you sure. Can insulate it to so far, and let me let me apologize also by the way. I'm sorry. What I meant was walking. She had a song called The Long Walk. That's okay. what it, that was one of her big hits. So let's so I don't want I'm talking about my favorite girl here, man. Yeah, I don't mm-hmm. want anybody to think she I, I think she's a great artist. So I don't want anybody to think that that was cynicism or sarcasm a moment ago. You know, yeah. what I mean? so I just want to say, Rod, go, go ahead, Rod. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he should have got it for it. I still say that. Thanks. But um, anyhow, I, I don't think Jill Scott lives somewhere where, you know, a lot of our kids deal with, you know, violence on the street, shootings, you know, drugs, stuff like that, robberies. I think she probably lives somewhere where it's pretty nice. She does, but yeah. we always know no matter what, you can live in Beverly Hills. You got to come down from the hill. You're going to get stopped. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're going to. Right. I try to, Kelvin, don't do something that's going to get you to scroll again. No, I'm not saying that. Uh, I'm going to Derek live in a nice neighborhood. Why you got to go around? Yeah, Rodney live in a nice neighborhood. Right, but Derek's son just had to deal with that reality. That's just the reality. We got fireworks on September 29th. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but um, I'm I'm pretty sure, like I said, there's a, I named all the things that Jill Scott's son probably doesn't have to deal with. Racism wasn't on that list, mm. you know. Not what I'm saying so. I said, you know, street <laughs> violence, robberies, <laughs> shootings, all that. I didn't mention racism. That shit is everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah we go watch your mouse about Jill Scott. I see. But yeah, I, 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 I can understand Holland. I ain't gonna lie. I, I like it over there. I like. I know she went over there for the sticky. No, let, let's just ask uh, you guys. Uh, you <laughs> <the> sticky <laughs> went if you left the U.S., where would you go? I know D Ghana. I know. I know D. Ghana's on my list. Ghana. Ghana. I got a few places. Ghana, Antigua. Um, it's gonna be people that look like me. I, I could visit Holland. It's cool. I like. I like I mean, the bikes is a little bit or too much for me. It's a lot of bikes. If you ever go there, there's a gazillion bikes, but I think it's gonna be some kind of black spot for me, bro. It's, you it's think funny. we know that, D? That was a rhetorical question. <laughs> <laughs> it will be a black country. Right, you know right. We know you're not going to Switzerland, D. We know that. Nah. Fuck, yeah. Fuck, 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 fuck. yeah, that's me. That's me. Where'd you go, Rod? I'll be honest with you, I would want to go somewhere tropical. You know what I'm saying? I like the beach, yeah. you know, palm trees, clear water. But the thing is, I would want probably, and I'm, me and my wife have talked about this, we want isolation. We like, we want to build like a, maybe a house on a hill and have a view and then not too far from the beach. See, I want, I want, I want, a, I want scenery as well as peace. You know what I'm saying? So that's, I'm, I don't have one specific place I can name, but it would probably be tropical. Like I said, D said Antigua. I would, I would agree with that. I loved Antigua when Everybody I was. Everybody gotta go that water's tone, Rob. Blue the it is. Blue. Let me it's tell you something. Super blue. Ah, what's the name of that beach in Antigua? I can't remember. Right I can't now. think of it right now. But um, if, if my wife is watching, text the name of that beach that um, me and you have went to that you loved. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a beach there. Where the water is so calm, the sand is so white, and the water is so clear, you do not want to leave. Mm-hmm. I never seen anything like that. My wife is still talking about that beach to this day, to this day. Yeah, see, my wife but, is checking in. She's already answering the question that, that hasn't even been asked of me yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Costa Rica, Ghana, and Nigeria. Yeah, we we we, we have Ghana, but and, and Nigeria would be great. The most realistic place would be Costa Rica, since that's where her family is from. Um, that would be the equivalent of us moving down south or something. Almost. You'll you know sit there and listen to some mint condition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, leave mint condition, man. They got a great show, man. Kevin, <laughs> where would you live, bro? Where would I live? 
Yeah. I'm going just the opposite. I'm going to Switzerland. I'm not known. I've had enough of me. <laughs> I had enough of me. That's right. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Man, oh man! Speaking of Europe, we got some a European fox. I, I can't pronounce it. Uh, Ogo, oh, Ugos, what's the name of the Derek? Your the name is Ugas. Ugas. Yes. They just won the championship from what's the bum name, Derek? This is that. Now this is not Odeni Ugas. That was Alessandro Usek. All right. So he is. Uh, he was came up from the cruiserweight. He Usek. was uh, I thought, okay. champ for cruiserweight division. Just yeah. beat Anthony Joshua. There you go. That's um, the that's the bum he's talking about. Yeah, that's the bum. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. The underwear model, basically. Yeah, yeah. 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 The underwear Let model. Me, that's yeah. a classic line, son. I, I'm yeah. gonna, I, I'm gonna admit something. I didn't even know that Anthony Joshua lost in two. I got the doc from Jamie the producer. I didn't even know. That's that's how. I'm not even aware of what's going on in boxing. Another thing too, I think what Anthony Joshua is doing is a disgrace to boxing. How he picks his opponents, and first of all, who are these people that he is fighting? You know, I got a phone call because Anthony Joshua wanted to fight me too. He just picks anybody. <laughs> they called me. My wife answered the phone. She said, "It's some people from Anthony Joshua's camp talking about do I want to fight?" You know, this is what he's doing. He's just picking people that no one knows. The biggest money is in the big names like Tyson Fury, Dante Wilder. He has no interest in fighting them. And let's face the facts. He has lost twice to opponents that he should have walked through. One guy looked like the Michelin man yeah. that he lost to, and he knocked him out. Anthony Joshua should considering a model career, and he should exit boxing. And that's my opinion on Anthony Joshua. Yeah. Be a model, dude. Boxing is and, a star, man. And another thing, doesn't he keep man. all his fights over in his in yeah, London? Yeah, London? Yeah, He don't come yeah. to the states, right? No, I mean, he, no, he. I think he. I think he, he came once. Came, once, once. Yeah, he came he once. He in the Garden, yeah. right? That's where yeah, he lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, Garden or the Barclays? Yeah, yeah. He, he, well, he lost. That's where he lost. He lost to Ruiz here. With Ruiz, With Ruiz yeah. yeah, Andy yeah. Ruiz, right? It was at the. It was at the. Yeah. Was at, was yeah. that, man beat Was that Barclays? No, it was at the Garden or Barclays. I think it was at the Garden. I think it might have been the Garden, and he got knocked out. He got knocked out, and um, that was his first step up fight, if you ask me, because all the guys he fought was all they were all like you know European fighters from from you know from England mostly or whatever, just local domestic fight level fighters. And mm -hmm. the, the first time he left this, it was also the first time he left England, and he got his ass whooped. You know what I mean? So you know, Andy Ruiz is a legit uh, was is a legit heavyweight. By the way, he absolutely was, um, look how overweight he is. Well, <laughs> he's yeah, absolutely he's a legit with, heavyweight. With talented as well, because you have to remember he was undefeated when he fought when he fought Joshua. You know what I mean? He, so he was he undefeated was, at the buffet, Derek. <laughs> at the buffet. <laughs> Do you ever? I mean, Kelvin, have you seen this guy? What are we talking about? Nah. This guy's stomach is hanging over the freaking jock, the trunks. Like, I mean, he was. I wish Jamie could pull up a picture of him. This, I mean, he wouldn't even believe well, that he's a boxer. Yeah, but he looked like a man that changed tires for a living. He, Correct. He, he did, he did, but he's looking better these days. You know what I mean? He's, yeah, I heard he dropped some weight. Yeah, he you know. Some weight. But when he fought, when he fought Joshua, I mean, for a professional yeah. fighter to come in with that type of weight on him, I mean, Derek, come on, you know that's not an athlete no, right I there. Mean, listen, now I know the guy hits hard. I know he's he's a, he is a boxer. I seen him fight other fights, he, and he hits hard. But the guy needs to take a little bit more pride. In his training, no, absolutely, and 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 he and he paid for it the second the second fight, you know, the yeah. rematch. You know, he came into that ring and he you could just tell he got he just let himself go. He got he's rested on his laurels and he enjoyed his first win a little bit too much. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. What he happened was fight. the second fight. I think Joshua knocked him down and no, a chicken no, a no, chicken wing no. fell out. Right? No. <laughs> yeah. He, he, he boxed him. He outboxed him and he went the distance. It was a very underwhelming, um, uh, unanimous decision um, from by Anthony, you know, for Anthony Joshua. Um, he didn't, Joshua just did his job. He went in there and just kept range and just outboxed him and, and, ran, and, and Andy Ruiz, you know, he just, he, 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 he came in with a game plan and he, and he didn't rush him and he, and he, and he beat him. You know, so um, but this guy Alexander Usyk, man, I'm telling you, he's a good fighter. He's you're about to see some really interesting things in the heavyweight division, I think, because this guy Usyk, um, he's gonna have to be, he he's he's gonna have to fight. He's he's gonna have 
he's gonna have to come up the hard way because he's, he's a European guy, he's, uh, Eastern European, I think uh, Ukrainian, um, and he doesn't speak any English. He's not, he's not, he's not that marketable. You know what I mean? So, um, so, but he, he's got like three or four belts. So he's gonna have to come up the hard way. He's gonna have to fight everybody. Okay, you let know? me ask you this, once, Derek. Once let, let me ask you a question, Derek. Mm -hmm. Um, usually sometimes I've, from what I've learned from experience in boxing, when I was a big fan of boxing, usually guys have clauses in these fight contracts that they have to give a rematch. Does right. Anthony Joshua have that rematch clause yes. with this yes, guy? He yes, and he, he can't move on and fight anybody else. The thing is fixed. Like he, Listen, he can't even go you. nowhere and fight. You have to beat him a hundred times. And, and, and Anthony Joshua is going to, um, he's going to activate that rematch. All right. Clause. And Just like he did with Andy, with Andy Ruiz, right? Yeah, but the difference is he's going to lose again because Usyk, the way Usyk beat no, his no, no, Ryan, you have to say this guy whipped, he whipped his ass. He I, I didn't say it. I didn't see it. It wasn't even close, bro. Like he really, and he really could have went for the knockout, but his 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 corner was like, listen, do what we said we were going to do. Just stick to the game plan. And then that's what he did. He was really feeling himself like, yo, I could go knock him out. They were just like, nah, because they knew if he had knocked him out, they can't get the rematch. You see what I'm saying? Right. So, 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 so he's like, oh man, I get to get this guy's ass twice. Absolutely. Take your time, beat him, keep it alive for the rematch. And then you get the rematch. Money. And then you get a second big payday, bigger you payday. Second second big payday. Yeah, you get a second big payday. He's got to come see you. and he, He's going to come see you. So now you got two good paydays because nobody's going to want to fight Usyk, man. He's not, he's not, he's not a draw on his own. His the only draw he's going to make is through beating Joshua twice. You know what I mean? And then hopefully he can talk to Wilder or Fury or somebody to get them in the ring at some point because they are gonna come calling for, for for those for those other for those other belts you know so he's gotta now, maximize his his profit potential. Now let me ask you another thing because this this guy that beat Joshua he's smaller than Joshua he's shorter yes, he right so then the, for him to fight like Dante Wilder or Tyson Fury he's gonna look very small in that ring those guys are huge against, yeah he looks small against uh against Joshua Joshua's six six Deontay's uh Deontay Wilder six six seven, seven? Fury, yeah six nine. seven. Yeah, yeah. you know what? Let me ask you this question. When Tyson fought, the world would watch. When Alan yeah. fought, the world would watch. Can we ever get back yeah, to what we speak the most face. coveted world title? Most yeah. coveted title in all the sports used to be that of the heavyweight champion yeah. of the world. Are we remotely close to ever getting back? We're no. closer no. than we were before. No. We're closer than we were before. She. We're closer. <laughs> We're closer. Let me yeah, get this. We have somebody in mind. Listen, listen, mind. Right, right. Let me get this one. Let me get this. Go one. ahead. Go ahead and get him. Go ahead. No, and no, get no. Him. My man Rodney is an avid boxing fan. He know when I get tickets to the Barclays, we do business. I get tickets. I call Rod, whatever. He's a super boxing fan. What he didn't know is nobody in the heavyweight division. Man, I'm telling mm -hmm. you now. I, 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 Derek, way, I go to fights, Derek. I have no he, interest in I can't there say is somebody on the way that you can tell us the about. worst. Let me tell you something. Yes, this way, is the worst yeah. year of boxing I have seen. Not year. No, oh, yeah. No, more than year. Okay, it's fine. Probably the five five I'm, just seven counting, years. I'm, just, listen, I'm just counting this year. This but is Derek, give bad. me a name that yeah, somebody that's, that's, on that's on the way, Derek. Give me a name of somebody that's on their way up. Jared Anderson in the heavyweight division. Watch out for him. All okay. right. Jared okay. Anderson. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to something that D said on another show, right? Derek, if you if you had a fight party, right? I want you to pick two fighters that would fight that you can have a fight party, and we would show up. Y'all don't like y'all don't like boxing. Anymore. No, because it's no, not. No, boxing. I do like Derek, boxing. You, I've been there. I've been to boxing in Vegas. The oh, Garden, so you got a really good boys. fight coming up right now. You're gonna watch. Terrence Crawford is gonna fight Sean Porter. That's okay. I know fight. both. I know who I'm both, both, both of them. But the ball. thing is. I'm, I'm, so you think that you could have a successful fight party at your house with those two fighters and people would show up? Yeah, it's a party. I don't see it. Are they there for the party they're or are they there for the fight? They're yeah. coming for Norex. They're coming for Norex. Listen, food. Listen. Norex. We, people are going to come here for Norex food, eat the food at the table, and they're not even going to be near the TV. And I, Let me and tell you, man. I'm, hey, man. And I wanna, I'm now, I'll tell you what boxing needs to do. Boxing needs to hire Derek. <laughs> Derek needs to he can be a promoter. He, 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 he does. He does. I love the fact that he he's not giving up on it. He's no. still got the passion. No. passion I'm gonna res I'm gonna tell y'all something. I respect Derek's drive and how he 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 believes in what he believes, and I always respect people that stand on their square. And when it comes to boxing, Derek is gonna stand on his square. Right. He's gonna stand on it. 
Speaking of staying stay in the square, Brooklyn Nets star Kyrie Irving misses team media day due to New York City COVID-19 proof of vaccine requirements. This happened yesterday for people to notice in the sports world. Kyrie Irving, uh, media day in New York, for all athletes that play in sports in New York City, you have to show that you've been vaccinated to play. I think the Knicks is 100% vaccinated. I think the Nets is 99%. And Kyrie Irving, who's a superstar, and we know that the Nets probably could have went to the championship if he was there. He's not there. I don't know what they're going to do with guy. Got 80, for people know it's 82 basketball games, 41. If he doesn't show, he can't play 41 of those games at home. I'll just say this. And he won't get paid for them. If it wasn't this, it would be something else with Kyrie. It it would be something else. I say trade him. I say trade him, man. It has to be. But you can't. I would trade him. He's not worth it for me. The headache every year. Yeah, because Durant. Wants them there, oh, no. and that's just it. They they've made they've given Durant the keys to the kingdom when it comes to the net. So they're in a bad situation. I have never in my life seen more disgruntled millionaires ever. I, Kyrie <laughs> Irving is one of the most like one of the most unhappy people. You're gonna get you're gonna come to New York, which is the number one media market in the world. World in the world. So you come to New York, and you the biggest thing is this vaccination thing. If you don't get it, you cannot play in this city. And you talking about some, please respect my wishes. It don't ask me that. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. And these people are paying you an inordinate amount of money. They've got to grow the sport. And part of that is having you on the floor. So if you're not going to get the shot and you're not going to play, then declare it now. And that's it. And that's, that's, it. What, that's what trade. Yeah. No, retire. Because well, no. eventually you you still don't, it, it's it's not gonna get better. You're gonna wind up having to go to certain cities where it's gonna start being required. So that's it. Well, the the thing is, as I just finished saying, I, I respect people that take a stance, right? I never thought I would be here having a conversation and giving Kyrie a uh, Irvy like saying that I respect what he's doing, because at the end of the day, he's the one that has to take the hit. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, he's got to take the hit. The bottom line is, if he believes strongly enough in his beliefs, which I thought this country was, and I saw today how people on ESN, ESPN were basically kind of like going after him and another ball player. At the end of the day, it's their problem. It's their problem, and it's their, it's their, it's their, their, their beliefs that they don't want to take it. But Rod, that's not the issue about him taking it. Not what but, I'm saying is, wait, I want you to finish this too. And I never thought that I would be, like I said, giving props to Kyrie Avery because this is a man that also said that the earth was flat. You know what I'm saying? So I had to throw that in there too. But like I say, like I've always felt like if you stand on your square and you say this is what I believe in, I think as black people, we should look at that person and say, yo, he's standing for what he believes in because – it, it takes a lot of courage to do that. He's going to lose millions of dollars. Him and a few other players will oh, lose Andre, millions of dollars. Andre Wiggins. He's going to yeah, lose it. Uh, yeah, correct. He's yeah. going to probably lose like $31 million. Because he's in the city of San Francisco. Correct. Correct. The thing is, I just believe that if that's what the stance they want to take, we got to – we can't condemn them for that. because No, it, I'm not condemning we, them. We, we, no, not no. I'm not saying we. I'm not saying we. I see – I'm telling you about what I saw on ESPN. Okay. As black people, we can't condemn them. Now, I know they're getting paid and they have to push a certain narrative. But we should still kind of support black people when they're taking a stance and they're not being ignorant or foolish or whatever. Because if we stood together more often, we wouldn't be in a place that we in in this country. So don't let certain things divide us. No, what don't, I'm don't have to... he, but he strokes that narrative. That's my point. What I'm saying is this. Wiggins is saying from the gate. I got a religious yeah. thing. I want the religious exemption. They're not mm -hmm. going to give it to him. I'm standing on, I'm not. Kyrie, are you vaccinated? Yeah. I don't want to discuss that. Yeah, well, thinking? LeBron James did the same thing, though, Kelvin. He just recently announced that he was taking a vaccine. And they and they would go, oh, I saw on ESPN, they were going after LeBron. Like, what took you so long to say you was vaccinated? Being in California, you have to. You want that ring. That's what it is. At the end of the day, LeBron is not. LeBron got about a good year or two in this league left. And yeah. He's going to do it. What I'm saying is this. With, with Kyrie or Kanye West, or whatever. It always has to be confusion. It always no, has to be this. I I'm understand. saying, in other words, listen, I, I don't want $30 million a year because I ain't going to take this shot. I'm going home. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. That's all. 
And that's it. Yeah, Don't yeah, ask me yeah. nothing. But I'm yeah. going to go to media then. And the media can't ask me no questions about the biggest thing with this uh, championship team. But, Calvin, you got to understand how the media works. They're trying to pull him into a trap. It's the same thing with, um, um, what's it, LaShawn, um, what's the running back? Marshawn Lynch. Um, Marsh, Marshawn Lynch. The same thing. They 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 ask him certain questions because you he they know he's any different. question though, Ron. Yeah, but it's the media because thing. they know they know that they're trying to get him to say something that they could blow it up. But master That's your word, my, my master thing, your words. My That's thing all. for him, for my thing for what Kyrie ahead, is, he's such a distraction for the team always. Always, wherever I he agree. goes, I, I agree. No, no, I no, agree. no, no, no. I can't. If I'm the owner, I'm like I'm gonna sit down with KD. Like KD, listen, I could put the pet, pet together a package. We need somebody that's here 82 games. We can't design our, our games around a person that's only here for 41 games. Mm -hmm. We got to figure out something. We got to get some picks. We can get some. KD, you get almost damn near any dope-ass point. You can get a dope-ass point guard back for Kyrie. Let him go to one of them southern states like Atlanta and play somewhere and get some a package together and move on. And just got to move on. I think you got to move on from Kyrie. For me, as a business part of it, I got to move on from Kyrie. Yeah, I, and I, I need somebody to 82 games. I, and I understand that. I totally get it. I understand that he's got to be there for a game or whatever. But the thing is, they got this one thing. And sometimes you got to look at it. Sometimes things are strategic. Kyrie Avery could be playing two angles on this thing. He goes, yo, we have a potential of maybe making it to the championship, and they need me to do that in a way. So the bottom line is maybe I'm just going to play this thing out to show them that they don't have as much power as they think they do. There's, Kyrie Ave Irving is a little off. So no, I kind of I kind of question certain things that he does. Like I said, we're talking yeah. about a guy that said the earth was flat. He's the Kanye West of NBA. I, and last I get year, that. I get that. Year, he just disappears for about a few games. Like, I, yeah. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, in other words, then, 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 then the organization should trade him. They should trade him, and then basically it. And then, but somebody's got to pick him up. He's just going to continue. I'm going to be honest. Let me, let me no, say this it. guy, the, what Damon said, black narrative. Yeah. This motherfucker's sick. I'm black. I couldn't fuck with him. Y'all know I love black. I can't fuck with him. I can't. This, I, I can't that's fuck with him. I'm on a basketball team, but I don't ask questions about whether I'm going to play basketball or not at media day. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, like, it's just, I mean, it's, just, okay. it's always him. It's, it's always him. him. I oh, I get him. it. I agree a hundred percent. I know if they come out tomorrow. Is. If they come out tomorrow and say you are not allowed to take the vaccine, first person to fight to take it, Kyrie Irving. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. You. I promise you. <laughs> it's you ain't lying, brother. No, it's real. Real. It's him. It's just him. I and I got a theory as to why he does this stuff, but I'm not going to say it. Oh, don't let the devil use it. Because if I do, I have to run yeah. my own scroll. If I ain't going to say it. I'm, yeah, I'm going to be honest with you, Calvin. I agree with you on I one scroll. I don't know if I can help you on the second one. I got it. <laughs> I think it's something. I think it's something what Kyrie. I, I, think, I, think, I, think, Katie, I think Katie, Katie. Durant got this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm not gonna let the enemy use. See, the enemy is trying. You got eight minutes left. He's trying to use. I'm not gonna let the enemy use. Don't say it. Don't say I'm it. not. I'm not yeah. gonna let the enemy use. He's trying to use. It. Yeah, fight him. You fight him. It's the devil. Yeah, fight him all. Oh, oh man. man, listen, man. I'm, I'm watching and chopping, man. It's some good programming. At least uh, the last few few days, we got raising Canaan season. Well, just finale. The finale just happened the other day. Supposed to be based out of South South, South Jamaica, Queens, the early stages of Canaan, who's this is a spinoff from the Power series. Uh produced uh, I think executive producer 50 Cent. I, I like this season. I like the better than that power shit with Tyreek. This one was better. Uh, the acting is uh, that is better. And but this I didn't like it was fake South Jamaica Queens. But besides that, it was a good story. I thought it was a good story. So, yeah. Anybody else seen it? I definitely say it's a watch. I watched it, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, it was good storyline. I found some of the characters very interesting. I yeah. definitely, I definitely liked the mom. The mom was truly, and like, truly and I, gangster. And I like jukebox. And yeah, I like jukebox. I like the mom, and I liked actually uncle. The, uncle. the uncle Lulu. I like Lulu. Yeah, Lulu. Lulu yeah. looked like a real hustler. I, yeah, one, yeah, yeah. The one that was kind of over was a uh, Joey Badass character. Mm, Joey Badass. I, I'm gonna say, yeah, I'm, I know D's gonna disagree with me. What? 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 I thought Joey Badass played a good role, believe it or not. I thought he played it good. No, nah, he was good. I'm not saying he was bad. I'm not saying he was bad. It was just like he was just a little over the top. He played a good, like, a, a arrogant hustler. Yeah, he yeah. Know, he played the arrogant hustler very well because we all grew up with those guys. He was he was extra, you know, a little bit, little bit too, 
too hardish, but yeah, um, exactly. that's the character he was playing. But nobody was harder than and trying harder than Mary J. Blige, you know, because she was beefing crazy. with every. She was is beefing she with ever, everybody. Is she ever happy? Is she ever happy? No, she was beefing with everybody. Her kids. She had beef with everybody. She was mad oh. that the sun came up. Fuck yeah. Fuck you, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to put hands on you. I'm gonna have to I'm take you out. Why the moon mm. shining? I mean, yeah, I'm, she was beefing with. Every, she was never happy. Never. Yeah. Anybody yeah. else check it out? You guys can check it out yet, man. Well, Kelvin, we nah, don't I don't have that. cable, brother. Y'all already getting on me on my Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we get some cable. The, the Wi-Fi will act regular. If Wi-Fi yeah. is alone, they need some cable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nah, so, I haven't gotten a chance to watch it myself, man. I just haven't had time and whatever. But um, I was never. I'm just. I was never into it, though, man. The spit off the whole. I just. It was never my bag, man. It was just never my bag. I never got into it myself. But I will check it out, though. I have. But on you know, on the positive side, I got a lot of. I, if, I, if I do get into it, I got a lot of uh, catching up to do. It'll be like new for me. You know what I mean? So yeah. that'll be a good thing. But be like, I got the advantage is you get to watch the whole series without waiting for that's it. That's true. You know? That's true. Maybe I can binge it one day, and yeah, maybe yeah. I'll get into it. We'll see. Especially when happens, it's, get, it's getting chilly, like Ronnie said, the weather's changing. It's getting chilly. Oh, yeah. so, like, yeah. It's it's going. There's a lot of stuff I gotta catch up with, man. There's so many things people told me about. You, I got it like queued up. Yeah, you and your lady can sit down, watch it, snuggle up, chill. You know. Then yeah. watch that. I got other stuff I want to watch. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this is a child show. This is a child show. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to get an X rating here. Uh, yeah, right. And another one, Man, that, another, care. another uh, Fifty Cent spinoff that just recently happy. It's called BMF Black Mafia Family. This uh, there's only one episode. It just started on uh, on last uh, Sunday night. I mm. thought it was very. I thought it was excellent. It's about uh, people don't know Black Mafia Family. His brothers out of Detroit. That's really big. Meet your son on the left hand side. It's our left. I don't know how it looks on the screen for everybody else. But on the left hand side, and they, uh, they they got into the drug. We hear that trap music. These are some of the founding dudes that helped out promote that trap music and stuff in hip hop. Big Meech and them. So there's a Black Mafia family. So anybody, I saw it. I thought the first episode was pretty good. Anybody else see it? Yeah, I saw it too. I thought I agree. I thought it was. I thought it was pretty good too. It was off to a really good start. Um, usually those series have to start off really slow, trying to introduce all the characters. But it seemed like it they they got right into it really quickly, mm-hmm. and that 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 was good. I enjoyed that, you know. Yeah. Well, well the only, I thing I've seen, huh? only thing I've seen is this reality show I'm on right now called Work. That's the only thing I've seen lately. Oh man, oh, man. <laughs> but now nah, it's pretty good. Just check it out, man. You know, you know, get you got a lot of. We always talk about we want to see our reflections, even if it's these kind of stories. Some of these might be kind of dark, but also with this, if people can check out, you're seeing black actors, you're supporting black act- actors, and it, and you've never seen a stories from Detroit, like a Detroit gangster based yeah. thing. But also, it showed that they had family. It showed mm-hmm. that the father, the father was in the house. He worked a blue collar job at the plants back in Detroit. In the early '80s, uh, late early, uh, late, late early '80s, early '90s, you know, the, you know, late '80s to the '90s. You know, we all grew up the same age as the teenage. We all grew up in our '80s, so it showed that people look like, oh, it's a gangster. No, but look at the family part of it too. Yeah, look at the whole. Yeah. Look at what happened. Some why some of the reasons why these young cats went to these streets, well, especially in Detroit. We all know how Detroit was, and the yeah. options were like, you could get a job at the plant, but all the jobs started going to Japan, and they're like, yo, my son got a lot of money. We gotta keep these lights on. Correct. I mean, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't have much options. Yeah. They didn't have the bottom line is either you worked in the car plant or that was basically it, or you That's hit it. the streets. That's it. You when know, car plants left. What else do people have? Correct. I will say this, right? Um, I give I give Fifty Cent a lot of credit, man, for basically taking these street stories and putting them on TV as series and making a ton of money. Yeah. You know, and he he still has stories coming. There's still oh, more. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. what I'm saying? He's, he's creeping up on Tyler Perry uh, ter- yeah. territory. Yeah, you know what I mean? he's with, really with that regard. Yeah, yeah, he's bringing a lot of street legends and a lot of street stories to life. You know, I think I think it's I think it's pretty ingenious. You know, yeah, we Except, fed how many years we fed Italians. Yeah, Our, watching the mafia. Godfather, yeah. Correct. Sopranos. We can go. Correct. On, we can keep going on a list of that shit. Correct. So you know, even though it's like in a dark light, but we have those kind of stories. So we have we could go from the Medias to the Fifty Cents to anything in between. And yeah. that's what we need to have. That's all good, the, all man. The yeah, you yeah. have a nice range, you know, yeah. of experience, you know, yeah. which is it doesn't have to be all one, you know, one thing. Like, you know, we had the black exploitation era in movies where, you know, it was always kind of, you know, a, a similar thing it was always pimp holes and gangsters and all of that, you know. And it seems like we're starting to get a little bit more of a, of a, um, of, of a, you know, 
of a range. So that's yeah, good. long as so, I want to see no more slave movies. Yeah, no. yeah, 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 yeah. That shit ain't no monster Musa type of joint. I don't want those shows. Don't, I don't yeah, want to yeah. That's what we need to look. But, cool. um, we, need to, we need to get the monster Musa <laughs> shows on story going, brother. That's yeah. that's what I'm at with that. For real. And who bringing in the fireworks into the hood be the next movie? <laughs> <laughs> who is bringing them goddamn fireworks? Man? Anyway, <laughs> brothers, man, it's, it's the last minute. We got to go, man. Thanks for everyone for showing up and showing out for us. Love us. Please like, subscribe on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Ring that bell. We need two more people. Tell a friend to tell a friend. We love you all. Peace, peace, and peace. <laughs>